to season two, episode 36 of the Hall of Fame show. Number 36, number 36, once worn by Shaquille O'Neal, not yet a nominee for the United States Athletic Hall of Fame, but he will be. Yeah, 36 isn't the best number. You got what? We got Gaylord Perry. Mm. We got Jerome Bettis. Like, those are like middle of the road Hall of Famers in their sports. So maybe a little bit for you to yeah. those guys to get there. Yeah, well, of course you got the great you got the greatest player in the NBA, Marcus Smart, at the moment as well, but he's not quite eligible. Not well, no, not not quite yet. Well, Shaq was a former Celtic. He is, and he was the first Celtic to wear 36. Um hmm. but uh actually in, interestingly, I don't know if you saw this. Um uh why well, can think of his name, who the Celtics signed for a discount price, Dennis Schroeder. Mm, yeah. uh, he actually is his number 17 is retired by the Celtics. Actually, that's the number that's retired twice. That's your retired. No one named Jim Luskatov can play for the Celtics ever again either. Um, <laughs> so, but, uh, but he's number 17 and clearly can't wear it. So he's actually letting fans vote hmm. online for what number he should wear. I, I'm always going to have a soft spot for him because A, he's German, and B, he's holding on to that blonde splotch for the rest of his life. He is. Uh, I don't know why I kind of like it, but it's dedication. Yep. And so. we'll get to see. I'm, it'd be bad. One of the four finalists is 96. Uh, and mm-hmm. Werder Bremen, 96, is like, he grew up in Germany, and that's his least favorite soccer team. So it'd oh. be kind of funny if we voted for 96. I'm hoping they don't do that to him because he already said, please don't yeah. vote for 96. But it was one of the yeah. four finalists. So. And for, for those who had under two minutes for when Evan brought up soccer, well, actually, I'm amazed I haven't gone this far. We're in the finals. The uh, yeah. Schaumburg Boomers have made the uh, a the uh, the championship series. They won game one last night, mm. game two tonight. They're up against the Washington Wild Things, which unfortunately has no has absolutely no uh, relation to any member of the Sheen family. Uh, um, what a shame! But what state? Here's your trivia question: What state mm-hmm. do you believe the Washington Wild Things play in? Well, okay, so if you're in Illinois, obviously they it's not beat, They beat the team from Quebec in the semifinals, by the way, to get here. Well, that throws me off. I'm going to go with Iowa. Not Iowa. All right, I don't know. Washington, Pennsylvania. I was not aware there was a Washington, Pennsylvania. Me neither. <laughs> All right, well, uh, go Boomers. So Absolutely. Okay. Yes. Uh I've decided I'm cutting off politics. I on my shit box last week, I railed against Trudeau and congratulations, Canada, 600 million. We have the exact same result. Yay. So I'm going to move on to that and tackle racism again. Okay. Yes. Cause again, as you and I are often so apt to say, cause that's what the world really wants to hear. It's from two middle-aged, the older one, white people who are straight discuss raci- racism. And I think we can agree that we're both, against it racism bad yes absolutely but you know what i also don't like it's fake racism it's finding mm-hmm. things that really aren't there and i sent you an article like 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 ryan braun saying that the guy who screwed up his test sample was anti-semitic uh three Sorry, minutes for you to bring up ryan braun <laughs> <laughs> a pokey yeah. That is the anthropomorphic pile of human excrement for those who weren't listening last week. Yes. <laughs> Love it. But I, I came across an article because uh, every day I just Google search Hall of Fame, you know, to see what might come up mm-hmm. that might be of interest. And there was an article by a lady named Kimmy Yam. Uh, before I go in there, you're an adult. Stop calling yourself Kimmy. Okay. I want to point that out. Also, your Twitter handle, Kimmy the Pooh. I called myself Johnny Douchebag. I think when I asked Evan to do a show with me, he would have politely declined. I, you have to protect the name of the secondhand burrito. Well, hmm. <laughs> touche. <laughs> All right. Fair, either way, she had an article titled, uh, and I, I read some of her other stuff, and basically what she does regularly uh, for NBC News is tackle Asian American issues of which there's been an uptick in hate crime. We don't want to go in there. We, we, we know that yeah, there's is- been a massive uptick in hate crimes. Yeah. Absolutely. When we and, get to Asian Americans ever since COVID started. Right. And, you know, I, I, 
my wife being of Asian descent is experienced a few microaggressions in her day, but nothing tragic that is sort of beset what's going on a bit in the world now uh, to, to a certain demographic in a certain North American area, let's say. Mm -hmm. And again, racism bad. So the article she put out, let me bring that up just because I want to get the title accurate. I've got too many windows. I hopefully mine doesn't. I have, I have the title. It's why there isn't a single Asian player in the baseball hall of fame. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, she had about 3000 words and the correct answer and the answer can be answered in one sentence because none have been good enough. And also Ichiro is not eligible yet. Yeah. That's the second thing that would be sort of in parentheses. Or in yeah, I mean, as soon as Ichiro is eligible, which is two years, right? Or three, two years. Uh, about about this that. Next year after, I think. About that. I mean, like, realistically, uh, if Ichiro retired when he should have, he'd be in already. Right. And then, and then uh, Kimmy would have to come up with something else. But right. this was a garbage article about something that does not exist in the Baseball Hall of Fame. Have they exhibited some racism in the past? Absolutely, towards hundred percent, hundred percent, sure. Uh, toward <laughs> toward a, a, the Asian demographic, you can't exclude a group when none of them really meet your criteria. Now, to be fair, she did mention, and I'm going to say that somebody probably told her that Japanese players have an obligation in Japan and whatever so, to the Japanese leagues and whatever arrangement that they have between the Japanese leagues and Major League Baseball have prevented certain players from getting here sooner. She did mention that. But the, there's a key word in the Baseball Hall of Fame, a word that I sometimes forget. The first word after the is not baseball. It's national. Mm. It's the National Baseball Hall of Fame. The first major sports hall of fame of existence. And in 1936, when it came, it was 36 or 39, I, I might be off. 36. 36. 36, okay. In 1936, there was no other leagues that mattered in any other country. Yeah. American League, Correct. National League, Negro League. I don't even think the Japanese League even started by then. And, and I was looking at- I, do, I don't believe it did. I believe it came over with the GIs after World War II. I think it actually predated that because I was reading, a, I was doing a bit of research. So uh, an American professor actually brought baseball to Japan initially in the, in the late 1800s, but it oh, hadn't really reached league status for a while. And that for right or wrong, and I, and I would say mostly right, they're focusing on the leagues that exist in the country where baseball is king. It's the origin, it's still, it's still the place where it matters the most. Uh, so when you look at other players who have, if you look at the greatest Japanese player of all time. Sada Haruo. Yes. Uh, who will never be considered. And when I first started this, I actually got blasted. I had Sada Haruo number three. And then someone said to me what I just said here. It's the National Baseball Hall of Fame. You're right. And I had to say, you're right. Looking at the criteria that existed, Japanese, what you do in Japan, what you do in Mexico, what you do in Cuba, the Dominican Republic is irrelevant to this hall. Can they come up with an international committee? I think that'd be a great idea. Mm -hmm. yeah, but I mean, Tuffy Rhodes has to get in somehow. <laughs> well Which for those for those of you who don't know, Tuffy Rhodes was a below average outfielder. Mm -hmm. For the Red Sox, Cubs, and other teams who went to Japan and hit like 55 home runs one year. So, right. And realistically, and then that's also part of the problem because in the article also said, well, Hideo, she referenced Hideo Nomo a lot. And he, you and I are old enough to remember the mania of Hideo Nomo when he first came mm -hmm. over. And he was exciting. He was really good, but only for a brief period of time. Mm -hmm. uh, I think. I can make a safe assessment that Hideo Nomo is not a baseball hall of famer in the United States, but he's a, someone that you as a Red Sox fan, me as a Jays fan, we would have loved to have him on our staff for a five-year period. Yeah. We had, we had him on our staff for a little bit. Well, but he wasn't the same. Yeah. I mean, he wasn't the same. He was serviceable, but yeah, I mean, we did at, yeah, at least right. he was on team. So, right. so that is, and then, so the, the point that she was trying to make was, 
well, they don't con they don't consider it consider anything from Japan, and honestly, right yeah. now they shouldn't. They yeah, shouldn't because it's an inferior league. It's not inferior people. It is an inferior baseball league. That's what it is. That's what it was then, and that's what it is now. Perhaps even more so with the best elite talent in Japan now arriving in the United States in a greater number. Mm -hmm. So that was one player she mentioned. Also, Chan Ho Park. Like, really? Yeah. You're making Kate, and then you buried Ichiro later on saying how, oh, but yes, he will be eligible. And experts say, but she used the word expert six times. That was my insane and you're fantastic. Mm. That, well, he, he should get in the first ballot. He's going to be a lock. He a will lock. get a unanimous vote. And he, he may not get unanimous, but he's going to be darn, he'll be over 94%, 95%. I, I, I could see him getting unanimous. I could see him. I'm not going to okay. disagree with you. I'm just saying, yeah. I mean, we've had one unanimous person so far. And then the next yeah. time Jeter was blocked by two people, right? We should have had like 17 unanimous people already. Oh, I thought it was only the one person with Jeter, but it was only one yeah. regardless. It was, it was, yeah. it was one, one right. or two. It, it, it was one ass. Okay. There might be two or three. Uh, right. I'll, I'll predict he gets at least 98, 98.5. Sure. But sure. either way, he's the first ballot hall of famer. And I guess my whole point is let's, we let's, let's combat racism. Uh, it's fascinating how you did a better job displaying the systemic racism in the National Football League concussion lawsuit when they were offering uh, African-American players a baseline lower mm -hmm. than, than white players. They just started lower automatically. And virtually nobody touched on this, which mm -hmm. is fascinating because it was on ESPN.com. It was there. It's insane. And, yeah. It's nope. insane and insulting. Yeah, this, yeah. like... Here's here's my question. If we're not if we're not counting Japanese league stuff, right? Just for mm -hmm. her. So Sadaharu O is out of this, right? Never Who are we? Yeah, or, or she, I, didn't, I haven't read the article because I was okay, in yeah. training all day today. But so all right. So who are we going to? Akinori Iwamura? There is Hideki, no there's no Kojima. I mean, you have you have to bring up Chan Ho Park, who is I mean Good again in that same category. Would have loved to have him for five years. Yeah, Daisuke Matsusaka. Like, who are we? Who are we talking about here? Who had a career that was worthy of the Hall of Fame in the U.S.? None. And and Just the other thing, also, she missed completely was Asian American baseball players. There's not a lot, but there's a few. There's been a couple who are who finished their careers who were part Asian American who are fringe. Tim Linskin and uh, our favorite drunk driver, Johnny Damon. But for whatever reason, and I think it's just a simple reason, numbers. As the demographics shift, there's mm -hmm. just going to be more. Yeah, I, I remember a few years ago, this reminds me of an article that was written by, uh, who I think it was, the guy for Sports Illustrated, Tom Verducci wrote for Sports mm. Illustrated talking about how the Red Sox were still racist because they didn't have any black players on the team, but David Ortiz didn't count because he's not really black. Ooh. Ouch. That's, that's, the, that's yeah. a strange one. So a, a, a white guy declared a guy, a Hispanic guy who is clearly of African, Afro-Caribbean descent that he didn't count as black in his opinion. Uh, and like, the, but the overall percentage of black people, and again, the Red Sox, awful awful his, terrible, terrible. historical record on racism just the, again i will point this out tom yaki who is the first person i would remove from any hall of fame you've said that many times yeah yeah and even over kind of some out landis even over although i just think of all the people in baseball hall of fame Char, uh, charlie comiskey needs to go mm -hmm. uh there are a whole bunch of them need to go but tom yaki had both hank aaron and willie mays in for tryouts of the red Sox and gave both of them five minutes and didn't, and didn't sign either of them. Because, yeah. But he was like forced, to, he was basically being forced to give tryouts. So let him in the building, let him have two swings and throw him out. Mm -hmm. Like the Red Sox have an awful history, but one team in particular, not having a black player at a time when black players in Major League Baseball were all time low, 
and then having the Af- African American player they have on the team again, Afro Caribbean, not count. It's just silly. It's the same sort of thing going on in here. You're creating a situation. You're taking a law of numbers and counting it against something that doesn't make any sense. Because again, if we're having this conversation in two years, he's well, in. Yeah. If, 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 if each the, row fails to get in on his first try, then uh, we can talk. Then uh, we can talk. We can talk. We can talk forever on this. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, but that's not going to happen. If 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 so, Taguchi ends up on the ballot, and nobody votes for him. <laughs> I don't think that's a problem, though. And so, who, who, who's that middle reliever you got now, uh, Sawayama? Or uh, you got a middle yeah, reliever, I, actually, who's not particularly great. Well, we had Janichi Tazawa. We've had a bunch over yeah, the years. Yeah, but I'm not right now. Uh, yeah. I'm, we also we're while well, we're continually using the ugliest uniforms in sports. I can't think of his name. Okay. But yeah, okay. It, it, it's just one of those things. I'm just like, just can, can we not just come Sa- together? Sawamura. Sawamura. Hirokazu Sawamura. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's just like, can we not just come together and, and not like nitpick at things that don't exist? And with right. all due respect, Miss Yam, you don't know what you're talking about. You have no clue what you're talking about. And it's not like you can't write. I've read what you do. You're good, but you're clearly not somebody who knows anything about baseball and we're given information from other people. Yeah, it, there are enough problems with actual racism than to go looking for racism in every corner. Right. And Lord knows we've talked about enough of that. I don't, let's move on from other. <laughs> we, 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 we always say we're not going to talk about racism this week and then we can't help it. It just happens. Well, you know, well, it, it's always there. I mean, like we can pretty much stay out of the politics now. I, don't, I, I think. I'm going to make a stronger effort to always do so, but racism populates the world right now and it populates sports a lot more. And for those who are tired of hearing it, we're tired of talking about it, but that was something I got to come up with something for the shit box. And that's my shit box topic. Fair uh, fair enough. Yeah. Uh, Should we jump in right to, we got a massive main event. uh, I think the pro football hall Mm -hmm. of fame has announced the 122 preliminary candidates and I think before we dissect that a little bit, uh, Evan and I, we chair a group uh, that we're going to do again. We did that last year. It was sort of a trial, and I think it ran pretty good. We learned what to do, what not to do. In my case, for a baseball one, I learned not to get completely obliterated. But <laughs> luckily, I've got you sort of taking, taking care of that for me. But uh, we've got probably, we had about, I think it was nine, 10 people, like super fans and really Hall of Fame enthusiasts who really understand a lot, a lot of football history, but we want to make sure that we're, we're getting different points of view. Uh, I pretty much know what everyone's going to say on a lot of topics because we've talked about this so in depth. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I know what some other people will say, but I think we'd like some other people bringing us in, uh, other thoughts. And, and, and last year when we did it, we learned a ton mm-hmm. on things. There are people like, well, there's someone who didn't show up this year, which I think we're both shocked at by um that was just the the part that was done on it was amazing i have to say um the part on peanut tillman Mm -hmm. last year that was someone charles tillman of the bears was someone i'd ever seriously considered Mm -hmm. but he led he basically led the nfl in fumbles forced for his career like he was a fumble force machine that's where the the peanut punch comes from and that makes a big difference when i hear tillman now i don't know the that I think of Tillman so much as I think of Jack's uh, Jack, Jack first. Reach yeah. Out. Well, yeah. Jack, Jack talking about it. He made a really, really good point. And, and this is a good year for other people, other candidates, because the, the folks are coming out there. There's some interesting wide receivers. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's one person people think might be a first ballot. Uh, but this, this is a good year to catch up on some of the other folks who. Yeah. And, and been circling around for quite a year, a while. Yes, and, and basically, what we're what, what, what I'm trying to say, and maybe I didn't word that properly. We want other people, other voices. If oh, you sorry. Heard of this? Yes. Please come in. Mm-hmm. Uh, and one great thing that we have right now, we are representing a lot of different fan bases. We all mm-hmm. kind of look the same, but we'd like to also change that up a bit too. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I mean, like if you if you've got some, if you're really passionate about this reach out to either Evan or myself. Uh, we 
We want to hear from you in this group. We, a lot of the people, they tell me it's fun. Why would they lie to me? They're not trying to get in my pants. <laughs> Only reason why you'd lie? No? Okay. I don't know. <laughs> not all my jokes hit, but I try. Eh, whatever. <laughs> So uh, we're going to look, let's look at uh, these 122 without going, because th this is going to be a long show, but let's just hit them really quick. Uh, I, I really want to spend a long time on Wesley Walls, just so you know. I'm just kidding. Continue. <laughs> Jake, Jake DeLome again. Okay. So Randall Cunningham, Jake DeLome. Okay. Uh, Boomer Esiason, Jeff Garcia, Dave Craig, Donovan McNabb, Steve McNair. What sticks out? Uh, that someone keeps nominating Jake Delum. Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, so I think of this list, first of all, Bledsoe was on the list last year, was not nominated this year, right. which was interesting because I think Bledsoe is significantly better than Delum. Uh, Garcia's on this list too, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I would put Bledsoe ahead of Garcia. Dave Craig's an interesting case, uh, but I would say the only two of them even worth discussing as part of this you could probably have a discussion about steve mcnair maybe mm -hmm. uh but i think the two the two eagles qbs randall cunningham and donovan mcnab are the only two i think have a legitimate shot to make the semifinalist out of that group mm -hmm. yeah i'd agree with that uh there's two other omissions to me uh one who's never been nominated uh michael vick yeah. and we know that he probably won't be uh not because of what he did on the field, but because what he did off of it. There's yeah. Like so this is this is his technical third year being eligible. Although he officially yeah. retired in, at the end of twenty or in the twenty seventeen season, yeah. although he last played in twenty fifteen. Right. Um, so this would have been his third time. He's never been nominated. But you're right. There's a much bigger name who we both expected to see at least in this list. Yeah. And I didn't notice it at first in our group chat. Uh, Vinny Laspinuso. Uh, you can also listen to his show on. God, I guess I have a network, the Not in Hall of Fame network. Vinny makes the Hall of Fame case for. Jesus Christ, he makes it for almost everybody. My God, but he does. But he, but there's he he does a lot of great historical deep dives. And anyway, he mentioned right away, and I didn't catch this right away. Tony Romo is not on this list. Yeah. I mean, interesting. I mean, He's a four-time Pro Bowler. He was a second team all once. Mm -hmm. Uh. Not that I think he's a Hall of Famer. I don't think any of us would think he's ever getting in. But the idea that he's not even on the list is kind of amazing. There was probably more articles combined about Romo's Hall of Fame chances. And a lot of that's also due to his popularity in the Dallas fan base. Than really all of these others, maybe the exception of McNabb. Right. Plus he's on TV and thought generally to be pretty good at it, which seems to give you a leg up when people are thinking about who to nominate. I could, I could have argued him as an elevator ups maybe a year ago for getting in as a broadcaster. I think he does a mm -hmm. phenomenal job. Mm -hmm. uh, I, it, I, it, the, the number of times he calls a play, what's going to happen before it happens is actually pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. he, he does it more in one game than Troy Aikman and Dan Fouts have done in their careers combined. Yeah, yeah I'm not going to go into another diatribe of Troy Aikman's inept commentary, but yeah, that'll move the chains. Sorry. But yeah, so that was that was pretty interesting. But again, there's no star quarterback. I was going to wear my Drew Brees jersey just because I thought this would have been the right time to do it. So then I put on like the the old uh, Irish one here. So I don't know if you caught up, picked up on that. Irish I, I, I did see. I was trying to figure out if it was a logo of a uh, of a uh, team or just the Irish uh, for yeah. Clover. So yeah, ju just oh, that's, no, sorry. That's is that Notre Dame? Yeah. Oh, OK. I just haven't seen that Notre Dame. hat. I'm actually wearing a Notre Dame shirt. Oh, there you go. Uh, well, another tribute to your brother, the for, uh, former. Yes, this, this actually this actually is my brother's shirt that I stole from him. So, <laughs> yeah. forty one years old, you still get hand me downs, huh? Yeah, well, he was he was cleaning out a closet. He's like, hey, I need to get rid of these clothes. I'm like, I'll take them. So most of them most of them don't fit, but this one does. So this one's right. in rotation. All right, so we can get to the running backs. Not much has changed. Uh, Sean Alexander, who I expect we will have another deep dive discussion. Yeah, Sean Alexander's amazing case that he does not have more support nationally than he does. He's, an MV he's a league MVP. There are not that many running backs over the last 25 to 
50 years even, who have been league MVPs, and Alexander was. A member of the elite 100 touchdown club. Also true. Yeah, so for whatever reason, he gets zero love. Behind, and he's behind some curious people in my eyes. I don't know how that happened, but maybe we'll have somebody sort of explain that. Uh, Mike Allstott, if uh, I think Vinny said this also, if there's going to be a, a last fullback to ever get into the Hall of Fame, it could be him. There's another one on this list that I think also has a pretty good ar- argument for that, but go ahead. Yeah. Uh, Tiki Barber, uh, who retired himself out of the Hall of Fame and then spoke Correct. himself out of it. Man, but I, and, then, and then did a bit, really bad job at broadcasting himself out of it as well. So that's got to kill him, right? I mean, when he sees his brother with the job he thinks he's supposed to have, and then Michael Strahan with the career he was supposed to have, and then Eli mm-hmm. sort of having all that. He, this, how this guy just get drunk every night? I don't know. Maybe he does. Might. You never know. He very, you know, he very well might, because that's why he retired. He said, I'm going to be a, I'm going to be a TV personality. Yep. And it didn't quite work it's, out. It's, it's like when those uh, bit characters from popular TV shows are like, I'm leaving. Like Gary Berghoff from MASH was going to leave for his big career. Um, yeah, but he didn't really do that much after. It's more McLean Stevenson. Oh, McLean Stevenson is another one, too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so. Georgia you- Fox, Georgia Fox on NCIS, not NCIS, uh, CSI. She was going to go do a movie star and everything. Also from NCIS, I can't think of her name, Cody DePablo, hmm. who was like, oh, I'm going to go do a whole bunch of stuff, star in movies, and nothing happened. And so she's now like back and forth every once in a while on NCIS. So I, I have a new goal now. I want someone to actually go up to Tiki Barber and call him, call him the, the McLean Stevenson of football. I'm sure he'll get that reference. I'm he, he might he might but then he'll he will never take a helicopter over the uh, south china sea so lieutenant colonel henry blake's plane was shot down over the sea of china yeah. there were no survivors yep. Sorry. that was a that was probably the worst ever radar o'reilly impression not many of our viewers or listeners may have been alive in 1981 when that happened. So, uh, 70, 76. No, 76. I don't know. I think so. Oh, that, was, before, that, was, that was before I was born, too. So, no, we're all I'm, old. I'm an old fuck. All right. Ernest Biner. I don't think he has ever it's, a shot. It's, it's unfortunate when your most famous play is a fumble. Mm-hmm. Yep. Larry Centers, Corey Dillon. Corey Dillon's actually. I don't, I don't think he's really going to get in, but I, I think he's better than people think. Yeah. Well, Corey Dillon, I, back to Larry Centers for a second. Larry Centers was really the first of the third down receiving backs. Mm. Like he was, he was one of those guys who often came close to lead. He led the league for running backs and often came close to uh, leading the league in receptions overall. Uh, he was the Patriots for a bit. He was with the, the Cardinals for a bit. He'll never get in, but he, I think he's a very, important inflection point in in the development of that position he led to kevin falk and 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 uh all the other sort of receiving i guess james white for the patriots now mm-hmm. those type of guys who aren't going to run it very much but are always there in the backfield to block and catch the outlet or the screen so uh work done never be on cat fancy again <laughs> Eddie George, another pretty good player who could mm. sneak in as a semifinalist, possibly, but eh. maybe. Uh, Priest Holmes does not get enough love. No, I agree. Uh, Steven Jackson, who was also pretty damn good. Mm-hmm. I would uh, take Holmes over Jackson, though. I would too. Uh, Jamal Lewis, uh, another guy that when you if there's like a sporkle thing and you're trying to figure out and it says, uh, name the 2000 yard rushers, you forget Jamal Lewis did that. I think he has the highest single yards in two franchise history in one game. Oh, does he? Okay. I think both the Ravens and the Browns would have to be. That's the only two teams he ever played for. Yeah. And I think he did the Browns against the Ravens. If I remember correctly. Uh, so. This one's always weird to me. Eric Metcalf, not because he doesn't, he's not worthy. It's just because I wouldn't slot him here as a running back. I would have put him. Yeah. He's more, he's more return, man, but 
whatever. Uh, Lorenzo Neal. That's the guy I think also if has a legitimate argument. I don't think I don't think they're ever going to put another fullback in, but at least Lorenzo Neal has an argument for being the last fullback if they ever put him one more in. Overall start. I'm just I think those are the two. That's okay. what I'm saying. Uh, Fred Taylor, who I was still shocked he's been a semifinalist, I think twice now. Yeah, I don't know. He's there's go ahead, keep going. Yeah. Herschel Walker, who I'd like to think I made a very good case for last year, didn't help. Swing. Potential potential super uh, future senator Herschel Walker is running for Senate in, in Georgia. I don't think he's going to win, but he's running. That is it Georgia or is he doing that now? Yeah, it is Georgia. Okay. Well, I mean, there, there's a conversation there, whether that helps him or not. I'd say not, but whatever. Uh, Ricky Waters, so I think his time at Oh no, it's not running wild. But yeah, he he's been a semifinalist before. Yep. So and yeah, I'm 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 just sad that Glenn Milburn's not back really <laughs> from last year. That was like the most shocking name I've seen I've ever seen nominated. Uh, yeah, it is. It it just doesn't fit. And Brian Westbrook, who uh, mm. I, I'm not sure, but this might have been his first time ever. I don't remember seeing him as a preliminary finalist before. I didn't pay as much attention to this until like a couple years ago i don't think he's ever appeared before on my list but brian westbrook another larry centers type guy although he ran much more mm. now the so, wide receivers are fast. so hold on so out of that group so out of that group who would you who would who do you think may be getting through the semifinals i i can't get past michelle alexander bias i mean like if, if i'm saying you, you have to look at what they, what they do is usually lather rinse repeat mm-hmm. so because of that, I want to say Waters and Taylor. There's not a lot of new blood this year than last year. I don't think there's anybody new on that. Waters, team. okay, I can sort of see, but the idea that the idea that Taylor is better than Sean Alexander or Priest Holmes is insane to me. Well, it, it is. So, or they might sort of go, okay, we tried this one. Let's uh, look at another name. Uh, I'm hoping that Alexander is going to be the guy they give a look to that should allow some other discussions. And for whatever reason, uh, the Seahawks aren't as vocal as they are in the stadium. They're not vocal for this. Yeah. I don't know why that is. Actually, that'd be nice. That'd be good to get a Seahawks uh, fan on yeah, this, we need- this panel. Yeah. We- See if I know any Seahawks fans. I got to know a couple. Yeah, because I'd certainly like to get some perspective there. So I don't know that they necessarily pounded the pavement that hard to get Kenny Easley in. No. I'm glad to see Easley got in, though. Yeah. I think one of the first hate messages I ever got was I didn't rank uh, Dave Craig higher in the high enough. <laughs> Actually, yeah. Well. No. All right. Uh, the wide receivers to me are, are the most fascinating new group only mm-hmm. because of so much new blood. And since we've been doing this and probably if we would have done this 10 years earlier, we would have probably said like, this is the hardest group, you know, to get in uh, the bar and the production. No, pro- I think no position with the exception of quarterback has seen just an increase of, of statistics. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. So what is normal now would have been mind, mind boggling 10, 10, 20, 10 years ago or 20 years ago. So we've got some people here, uh, starting, starting right away with Anquan Bolden, who yeah, phenomenal player, uh, seven, 1000 yard se- 1000 yard seasons, 13,779, 82 TDs. And yeah, he'll be lucky to, to get to, to get to the finals. One of the best blocking wide receivers of all time too. Mm-hmm. Just an absolute tough guy. Someone who, if you ever had the opportunity to get Anquan Bolden on your team, you're super excited. Mm-hmm. Um, and a great guy. Yeah, really is. I, it's this, this, this whole wide receiver list and we'll, we'll go into it. I, I honestly think I'll just say it now. I think that the last year we had the fi- 15 finalists, Mm -hmm. They cut five. We were down to final 10. Five got in. Five were waiting at the door. One of whom was, um, what's his name from the Browns? Just out of my, popped out of my head. Uh, Clay Matthews Sr. So, or Clay Matthews Jr. Technically was Clay Matthews Sr. Because Clay Matthews Jr. in the league is Clay Matthews the third, but regardless. So Clay Matthews Sr. 
is now into the, the seniors category. Mm -hmm. So that leaves, though, I think those other four are probably getting in. And I think that leaves one spot. And there's so many wide receivers. It could be. Um, I wonder if there is a wide receiver, if they keep the queue or whether they let somebody jump. I don't know if it's going to be Bolden, but it's going to be interesting. So, yeah, and, and to verify, basically Calvin Johnson, we, I think one of our coolest debates last year was we, mm -hmm. I don't think anyone thought that he wasn't a hall of famer. Uh, mm -hmm. I did not think he'd go in first year. I thought it would be second or third, but I'm not upset about it. No, I'm not upset about it either. I, yeah. I only I only get upset when people who who should be in the Hall of Fame get like snubbed repeatedly, like when they did with Michael Irvin that a few years ago. That he just year after year after year, mm -hmm. or he, he made the final five twice and they didn't vote him in, which means that other people should be getting in aren't getting in. Yeah, like Calvin Johnson, whether he got in last year or two years from now, was going to be a Hall of Famer. So who cares? But it was interesting to see that he they thought he was good enough to jump uh, Wayne and Holt, who are the two guys I would say in the pecking order ahead of him once they got Bruce in. So we shall see. So, so that leaves us with then Wayne and Holt. Now, does Bolden jump either of those guys? I don't think Bolden's the guy who jumps either of them. And, I've, and by the way, I put them in the order of Holt and then Wayne for getting in, just by the way. Okay. Um, uh, it, I, it, I could be wrong. It could be reversed, but I put them in Holt first, Wayne second, just in terms of who retired first and everything like that. Mm -hmm. um, and I, and honestly, given their two careers, I would rather have Tory Holt on my team than Reggie Wayne. No offense to Wayne. It's a very close one, but I think I just like Holt better as a player. Yeah. And the final um, thing I, I, I wanted to, to make my pitch for Holt. So I, I would agree with you that that's my preference. I think their preference might be Wayne over Holt. I could be wrong. I don't know. I don't know either, but yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting. Keep going with the rest of wide receivers. We've already, I've already hijacked it. So yeah, uh, uh, it's, it's the big main event and everything else. Everything's a letdown after uh, <laughs> kind of like uh, when I have sex, but I'm bum. it's my second self uh, deprecating sex joke today. Can I do three? Can you yes, keep it up? Wife, she'll say no. Uh, ah. Can you keep it up? Mm. Troy Brown. I, it's okay. Ah, uh, my one of my favorite players of all time. Sure, he could be a hero as a kick returner and a defensive back. Yeah, but when we he's go, a, he's one of my favorite players of all time. There's two players in page that the Patriots would never have won all those Super Bowls without Teddy Bruschi and. Troy Brown and neither of them ever getting a Hall of Fame. And we're okay with that. Troy Brown was first ballot Patriots Hall of Famer, one of the most loved men in New England, Dra an eighth round draft pick, which again, they don't have that anymore. That's how long ago he was drafted. Yeah. Uh, Troy Brown is never getting in, but God damn, was he a wonderful player. Mm -hmm. I feel this way about Henry Eller. Uh, Henry Eller is a better player than Troy Brown. But I, I have Henry, Henry Eller should be in the Hall. But yeah, but he gets zero love. He's never been a finalist, yeah. I don't believe. No. Uh, 13,777 yards at a time where that was... He retired second in the league in yards, I think, when he retired. Yeah. Uh, so I'm looking here. So he retired 98. So he's only, this is a uh, penultimate. I love using that word. Penultimate. Time to, yeah. time to get in. Because when he retired, the only person in front of him was Rice. What we need a rank? Right. He was number two in the league. Now he's now he's he's got to be somewhere down in what 11th, 12th. I don't have that in front of me, yeah. but but he was number two when he retired and never has shown up anywhere. Like, I understand that Eller didn't play in a lot of great teams, but the fact that he had those yards not playing in great teams without incredible quarterbacks says something about him. Didn't hurt Calvin Johnson any. Certainly did not. No, yeah. but Calvin Johnson was that freak athlete. He was, True. and Henry Ellard is great an athlete as he was. And granted, he did. I, I, Calvin Johnson was that head turner. It's like you mm -hmm. waited to see. Okay, you didn't wait to see a Lions highlight. You waited to see a Calvin Johnson highlight because you knew it was going to be something good. Correct. 
Henry Ellard's name is also too boring. If, if well, maybe he should have called himself what was a GoBot name? I don't know. Anything. Leader One. <laughs> is that what one of the GoBots was called? Leader One. That was the name of the. That was the name of the jet. He was the leader of the good GoBots. Leader One. No wonder that show sucked. Uh, Devin Hester, uh, another one they they classify, I think, in a weird spot. But yeah. Hester's got that Calvin Johnson vibe to him, doing things that other people couldn't. Because and if you just go on pure numbers, there's returners that have him. I don't want to say destroyed, but strongly beat. But then Hester is also doing that. He might be the last great returner because it's next to impossible now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, he and Dante Hall for a while there were... There's a name, yeah. He and Dante Hall were the two guys who just were absolutely electric anytime they had the opportunity to get it. Um, there are a lot of people who think that he's going to be a first bat Hall of Famer, and I think all those people are nuts. Yeah, zero. There, there's zero chance of that. I don't even know that he's a lock for a semifinalist. Not, the, not a shot at Hester, just uh, this, this is hard to pare down to 25. Right, which again is why it's ridiculous to both of us that Fred Taylor keeps getting through. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Tory Holt, I think we've already discussed him, so we'll, yep. we'll move on. Holt, Holt will be a finalist. Definitely. Uh, Joe Horn, uh, as a Saints fan, obviously I really like this guy. He's not a Hall of Famer, though. He um, once cost me a, an, a championship in my fantasy football league where it's a, very, it's a week, week uh, 16 of the season – He's going in the end zone. He's celebrating with his arms out like this. And somebody came and knocked it out of his hand and he fumbled at the one. All he had to do was fall down at the one. I would have won the championship, but he fumbled at the one. I ended up losing by uh, three points. I'm still did bitter. He, this did, was did 2000. He, this was 2000. And I'm still bitter. I'll, I'll still always remember him for that phone stunt. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. Joe Horn was a hell of a, a hell of a player. He's never gotten the hall of fame, no. but he was an incredibly good receiver. Well, here's the one I think you wanted to talk about. Uh, Andre Johnson. Yeah. Now, Andre Johnson is, I think, the one who's got a legitimate shot of jumping people. I don't think he should. But if someone's going to, like, he was the, the offense for those Texas teams when they did not have great quarterbacks. I, I think, and this is sort of – not that this is the fault of Johnson or really any, anyone else, but let's just say Johnson somehow become, and it's possible, he could be a first ballot Hall of Famer. I don't think so, but he could. Mm-hmm. The Houston Texans now have as many Hall of Famers as the Bengals. That does not sound right at all. Yeah. I, I don't I don't think he's going to make it, um, but I he will definitely be a semifinalist in my opinion. I think so. Although the, although when I say when I look at the list of people, will definitely be a semifinalist. I haven't done it quickly, but I think there's like 32. Like mm-hmm. I just ran through it quickly. I'm like, oh, it's definitely semifinalist, definitely semifinalist. I think there's like 32 of them, and there are only 25 spots. So, uh, Chad Johnson, uh, who's now 0 and 1 in celebrity boxing. Although, is it 0 1 in celebrity boxing if you lose to someone who wasn't a celebrity? That is for someone who cares about boxing and celebrities a lot more than me to decide. I'm going to just say 0 1 in boxing, and he lost to a guy who was 0 1. Okay. I I don't even remember the guy's name who beat him, but I I watched that fight because it was the undercard of one of those. yeah, that of yeah, that of the Mayweather one, and so and the guy says, "You all know my name now." I guess not, because I forgot it. <laughs> I believe your name is Owen One. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, I, in his case, he's one and one. He's one and one. Well, one and one. No. Anyway, all right. Yeah. All right. Let's move. So, oh, oh, Chad Ochocinco probably not making the Hall of Fame. No. Although he's a. He was also an incredibly great receiver. May have been the best receiver in the league for a little bit there. Mm-hmm. He and at one point the most exciting, and it just fell apart for him. And just another guy who. He also played for the Bengals, so he has no chance of getting in. There's that. Uh, Derek Mason, another really good player, but 
Derek Mason and Rod Smith are the same player. I'd say so is Moose and Muhammad. I put, I, I'd rather have Mason and Smith than Muhammad. Muhammad also is a Bengal, so he's never getting in. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Derek Mason, Rod Smith, in, incredibly dependable. Mm. Uh, could stretch your field a little bit, but more, you, they're more possession receivers is, is what you need. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but that right. it's going to be hard for both those guys to get the Hall of Fame. Andre Risen. <laughs> I mean, th- that's so sad. Five time Pro Bowler, one time first team All Pro, 10,000 yards, and he's re- always going to be remembered for th- that's the third thing he's most remembered for. Mm. And for those wondering what those are, it's uh, Lisa Left Eye Lopez burning down his house, and then mm-hmm. years later, he went broke. Mm hmm. He was at the, you watched that 30 for 30 broke, right? I have not seen the 30 for 30 broke. I have it. I have it recorded. I have it recorded, but I haven't had a chance to watch. Okay. So when you watch that Ryzen's on that and he's being open about like everything, he is the only one who decided, okay, I'm not going to show up here dressed broke. It's, it's just sort of interesting that I guess he still didn't, I guess he didn't have to liquidate the suits. Good for him. Yes. Hey, you got, uh, you got to dress for the job you want, my friend. Yeah. The Smiths. Jimmy, Steve. Yeah, Jimmy, Steve is Rod. Rod's here too, right? Yeah, but we already talked about Rod, so I just thought it. Yeah, I was going to say, because there, there are a lot of Smiths on this list this year. Yeah. <laughs> we, got, we got Jimmy, Justin, Neil, Rod, and Steve. Um, but... Uh, Incidentally, Steve that Smith was the original really name of the actual band of the Smiths. They wanted to sort of like go with that, that whole Ramones pastiche. No? Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I don't think that Jimmy, as good as he was, is going to make it. But Steve mm-hmm. Smith is interesting because Steve Smith was interesting. He was a very, very good football player who had a heart, who had the heart of a lion talked a big game and backed it up Mm -hmm. and he was i believe he was he on the second um he was on the second raven super bowl team right yeah i I think so and and also too i mean like here's a guy who i mean sometimes we joke about not joke but we just say that some players they they they, they, like we said about Etro. he played three years too long i can say that about steve smith but only because i don't know how his body didn't give up yeah because he was still good at the end. I just don't know how. Yeah. Steve Smith is someone who I think has a very, very good chance to make the semifinals. Mm-hmm. And if he ends up on the finals list, I am not going to be shocked. I think with all of this, the biggest loser here is the next guy. Uh, Heinz Ward. Thank goodness. Because he, <laughs> and you say this as a Patriots fan. I say this as Heinz Ward may be my least favorite NFL player. You have ever. said that. Yeah, you, you, you have you have said that a few times. Ward I th- has been a perennial semifinalist. I don't he's I think he's actually got a bigger chance not to become a semifinalist than he does to become a finalist. Interesting, because this is just his group, which was already clogged, is clogged even more by people. Well, I think we can agree. Bolden passes him. I would say yes. Uh Steve Smith, I think, Steve passes Smith, him. Andre yeah. Johnson, I think, passes him. Yeah. So he's just dropped three spots. Yeah. And then you still got Holton Wayne. Yeah. And, well, and yeah, Holton Wayne. And then Welker is still on this list, too, who yeah. is an interesting, who's been getting a little bit more love mm-hmm. recently, as well as like, hey, he was one of the, he's the prototype for the, slot receiver thing that there, there's been a lot more talk about Welker as a candidate recently too. So I think Welker's gaining. I don't think, I think Ward is ahead of Welker, but Welker has been gaining on him from yeah. behind despite the fact I, that I think so. Uh, I, I could have used, uh, I could have said Heinz Ward's my elevator now. I fall, you know, from this, Ju- just from what I, I just described, I should have said, I, I just thought of this now, but I just figured you'd be going with Matt Ryan. So. No, I don't really have a whole lot. Uh, Cause I, I, I because of where it was, I was in Canada last week visiting a, a lot of stuff. So I, I'm still catching up on all football. I'm actually going to watch the red zone from last Sunday tomorrow. Wow. 
you know, before, but no, Matt, well, Matt Ryan's done as about as much as Matt Ryan's going to do. Yeah. But he's another one who's going to have, that'll be one hell of a conversation. It's, he's, it's, in the top, he's in the top 10 in passing yards. Who knows if he'll still be in the top 10 when he gets there, but yeah. Matt Ryan and Ben Roethlisberger are done. They are done, but Roethlisberger in terms of the hall does have the two Super Bowl rings. Oh no, Roeth- Roethlisberger is getting the Hall of Fame. Yeah. I'm just saying right now, both those guys are, are should oh, not be. Before we continue, I, I think I've I've now dropped from a, from a five beer deficit to a four beer deficit. I read that Fields is starting. Oh, he is starting. What did we, I? We did it off the cuff. I don't even remember what I said. Uh, I I said. I think I said you'd start by game three and you said game. Oh, five. no, you did. Yes, you definitely did. I think we said, yeah. I think it was five. Is and the four, number that we four was a roll. push. And four was a push. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, agreed. Yep. Yeah. Congratulations. You're down to four. Yay. I don't suck as bad. Presum- presuming he starts and the great in the first coach fired in the NFL this season doesn't change his mind. <laughs> uh, well, since we're doing this uh, going too much, I think we can just whip right through the tight ends because none of these guys are going to become semifinalists, but let's just give them a bit of love of who they are. Dallas Clark, Ben Coates, a very mm-hmm. underappreciated player. Uh, mm-hmm. Brent Jones, Heath Miller, and Wesley Walls. I'm assuming you were joking about going into a deep dive on this. Uh, of course I'm joking about that. Uh, Keith Jackson was on, was on last year, but he's out. He's now uh, into the senior pool. Yeah. Jeremy Shockey was a semi was on the, was nominee last year, but Jeremy Shockey's never going anywhere. Yeah. The only one of these people is worth having any conversation about just very quickly is Coates, who was a second team all decade for the 1990s. And if you watch his highlights, those of you guys who don't know who Ben Coates was, you just want to be like, oh my God, just watch Ben Coates highlights from the late 1990s or mid 1990s when he was all blood. So it was like Greg McMurtry and Michael Timpson and Ben Coates were the three options for blood. So, and uh, he just would run through and over and everything. He was a hell of a football player, second team, all decade for tight end. I don't think that's ever going to be enough. No, but he's the only one worth having a conversation about. Dallas Clark, Heath Miller, great players. Would love to have them on my team. Same with Brent Jones. Wesley Walls also played football. Um, so, yeah. Wesley Walls, I brought, I put him up. I have him as a Glenn, Glenn Milburn of this list, even though he was nominated last year. I think Wesley, well, I think I give Wesley far more love than that, but he's, he's not going anywhere. That's just me. Uh, offensive lineman, uh, I like starting with this one, Willie Anderson, who was a surprise semifinalist, and a lot of the Bengals fans have done a phenomenal job really explaining why Big Willie is a lot better than you think. Yeah. And there's been a lot more conversation about him. Uh, again, congrats, Bengals fans. You're really stepping up on this. Yeah. We, then we talked about that. What? in the last few years that Bengals fans, the reason they don't have anything is they've done as bad. As, well, not the Bengals fans, let me back up. The Bengals franchise has done as bad a job as any franchise in sports in supporting their guys. Yeah. That's uh, part of the reason there's nobody there. Yeah. And so for this, I'm, I'm glad to see him. I'm, we have someone who's who we've in our little fringe group. Uh, I hope he's going to be able to join us. Vance Meek, uh, if you're listening, shout out to you. Uh, so I hope you'll be able to sort of like give a little bit more insight as to, uh, as to why Big Willie belongs in there. Yeah, uh, that, was, that was another one of the people of the when we had that group last year, I had never really given Willie Anderson a thought. But after talking about it and looking at it, mm-hmm. Willie Anderson is definitely someone who should be at least a perennial semifinalist and probably someday at least at the finalist list. So, be, yeah, I'm, I'm agreeing more and more. Uh, and, I, and maybe before we, we uh, continue, one person who we had this, and you alluded to at the beginning, but we didn't really talk about it. Uh, Tom Nalen is someone who we all fell in love with in our group, mm-hmm. uh, thanks to the wonderful work by Thomas Hall. And we were all sold on him. We didn't put him as in, in, in the hall, but we certainly had him as a semifinalist after our discussion. If, if, if he were still on the list this year, the reason that Bert or that um, that Nalen didn't make our semifinalist or or I guess our finalist list last year is because there were too many first ballots. We've cleaned those people out. There's a legitimate shot that he could make it. 
this time. Yeah. And, I, and no, because the two best centers in football history who are not in the Hall of Fame, who are eligible, are Tom Nalen and Jeff Saturday, who is nominated this year. Mm-hmm. Like they're the next two. They're, Matt Burke is nominated as well. I love Matt Burke, good Harvard grad, a very, very good guy for the Vikings, but only, and Olin Krutz is nominated also at the center position. Neither of those guys is as good as Nalen. And I love Olin Krutz too. Where do you put Nick Mangold? Since we'll just stick with the centers here, because that's he's Nick, now, Nick he's Mangold. Now. Nick Mangold deserves some special consideration just in the fact that he is somehow the spokesperson for an alcohol company at this point. That is impressive. Like how how the he is not the greatest athlete in his family. His sister is by far. I was gonna, uh, uh, you know, it's funny. I was just gonna ask you if you're if you knew his, his sister. Uh, I started. Fo- I I don't follow her. Well, I don't have an Instagram. My dog has one. But yeah, Holly Mangold, who did play some high school football, and we we talked a bit about uh, women playing football, and usually it's always the kicker position. Holly Mangold represented the United States and and women's weightlifting and the heavyweight thing, and I, I think an injury kept her from yeah doing particularly well. Just seems like if if her Instagram is any indicator, and she she wasn't the biggest loser. One, I think I think I only watched clips of it because she was on it. And she mm-hmm. just seems like one of the most delightful people ever. She does. She yeah. seems like an absolutely wonderful person. Yeah. I think Nick Mangold is very, very good. Someone posted that they thought Nick Mangold was going to make the Hall of Fame this year. That person is <laughs> that person is on fentanyl. Uh, like um, it's there. There are there are four centers on this list, right? And I'm looking at. Did I miss somebody? It's Burke. Burke Saturday, Kruitz, Mangold. Oh, it's wait. Kent Hull was Kent Hull in it as well. No, Kent Hull. I think he's was that was his last year, so I think he's out. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm looking at my old. I had, I haven't updated the list yet, I, or fully. So that's my fault. Um, yeah. So I mean, Saturday is the best of these guys. Um, but Nalen should be here. He should at least be in the list of 122. Mm-hmm. I like, I like him a lot. It, it's funny now you're playing, for, you're playing for the biggest market in sports. And it hurts you because it's the Jets. Yeah. I could argue the same on, on, on with Henry Ellard. Is weren't they, wasn't, weren't they in L? No, they weren't they're, LA. Then. No, they're the LA Rams. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's yeah, right. Yeah. LA Rams. Yeah. Yes. So. Well, they moved to St. Louis at the end, but they're the LA Rams up to that point. Yeah. Ellard retired right before they got good when they got Kurt Warner. Mm-hmm. All right. So then we've got, uh, I'm not going to, I don't think we should talk too much here. Tony Baselli, who we, I think we all know is going to be a finalist. Yep. Tony Baselli, I think is getting in this year. Yeah. Uh, the two Browns, Lomas and Ruben. Uh, I'm a huge, huge Lomas guy right now. Yep. Uh, to Berkashaw Ferguson. It's his, he's an interesting one, uh, but only because I like to say to Berkashaw. Yeah. I mean, that's his number one thing. He, I was very familiar with his work in the America and the AFC East and mm-hmm. He was never that big of a problem for anybody. I don't think he's should be on the list, but go ahead. Uh, Kevin Glover, eh. Jake Long, yeah, eh. yeah. Uh, Jake Long, it's, it's first year of eligibility. Yeah, uh, first few, first few years he was a beast, and then got injured, and then just never recovered, which happens, of course. Yep. Uh, Logan Mankins, I know you're a big guy on the on him. Yeah, I think Mankins is going. Is going to be a semifinalist and is a fringe possibility for making the finals list. I just think there's a, I just think there's too many other folks here who you can make arguments for Willie Anderson and uh, well, this Sam. Now we haven't gotten him, but our buddy Richmond Webb, yep. I think, are both people who I would put ahead of him uh, on this Absolutely. list. And yeah. and and it's Saturday is. I mean, they they're gonna they should put one of these centers at least the semifinalist list. So, right. but I, I'm, I'm a big Logan Mankins guy. Um, I feel bad for him. He was drafted in 2005 and tra- got to two Super Bowls, which they lost. It was traded right before they beat the, uh, beat the um, Seahawks. Um, so it will be interesting to see. I don't know if I've, I've complained that they're going to be more Colts for, for that. The Patriots beat in the hall of fame than Patriots. Uh, Mankins is one of those guys I think is going to be just on the outside. 
So, because I think eventually Saturday and Wayne both get in. Yeah. Uh, Vinatieri is going to count for both teams. Um, but I, so. but ultimately, ultimately, I mean, they already have Manning, James, Harrison. Um, uh, Robert Mathis is on this list. Dwight Freeney is a possibility. Uh, they got Polian. So they may end up with more, and that's sort of frustrating. So uh, Jesse Sapolu, a waste of a spot. No disrespect. Yeah. Um, Actually, he, he, he may be the uh, Glenn Milburn of this list. Yeah, I, I think so. I uh, apologize to Wesley Walls. Chris Snee. Mm. I met his parents once at a preseason game. They're very nice. Nice. Uh, did I meet? I, I, I think I've, I've met uh, parents on this one too. Oh no, they're not anymore. Jay Hilgenberg. Hmm. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Because yeah, it was it was a Rocky Mountaineer, and not a lot of uh, Americans there, uh, or so not a lot of Canadians who, when someone's wearing a a college thing, sort of knew that. Ah, huh, Iowa. Go Hawkeyes. Ooh, our son went there. Oh, okay. Yeah. He yeah, played football there. Oh, okay. Jay Hilgenberg. <laughs> you know, it's, <laughs> it's like, I'm yeah, just, we, yeah, the, we, ours, we, the Giants and the Patriots had a preseason game at Foxborough and it was like a terrible night and we were sitting in the nosebleeds and there weren't that many people there for the preseason game. And uh, we figured out there were a whole bunch of Giants fans over there. So I just went over and talked because I go talk to everybody. It turned out it was Chris and his parents. So they're very, very lovely. Uh, Brian Water is a pretty good player, but he's not going to get attention. I like him. I like him a lot, but he's not going to get any further. Uh, we say uh, Richmond Webb, but we, we say our friend because Richmond's involved, and here's more blatant self-promotion here. Uh, he's mm-hmm. part of our group that helped decide the nominees for the United States Athletic Hall of Fame. So you think if it's just these two idiot white guys? No, we got people, man. We've got real athletes. Also an incredibly nice person, Richmond Webb. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, he also, he did uh, the classic sports review show with, with uh, Glenn and I. Nice. Yeah, when we, when we looked, at, uh, looked at a Bills game. Yeah, the, the comeback. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Eric Williams. Eh. He played for the Cowboys. That's his number one yeah. thing. <laughs> and the one player, uh, I, I feel like I'm repeating myself, but if you're listening for the first time, the one player that I don't know how the Raiders fan base isn't jumping all over, Steve Wisniewski. Yeah. Yeah, that Wisniewski is someone who they should be backing quite a bit. So They're not. They're, they're, they're not. If, if we try hard enough, we're really going to get plunk it in. No, you're not. But Wisniewski, there's a shot. All right, let's go to the other side of the ball. Yeah. Uh, so on the defense, uh, so the linemen, we've got uh, John Abraham. Very, very good for a very long time. I don't think he's going to quite get there, though. Yeah. Uh, Jared Allen, who was who was a finalist last year. Uh, I As good as he was, I think his popularity and personality exceeds it. And that sure as hell helps. Yeah. Uh, he'll be – I don't think he's getting in this year. Allen will be in the Hall of Fame within the next two or three years. Yeah. Uh, former Saints, who I like a lot, but he's not going to get in. Uh, Leroy Glover. Mm-hmm. Very good player. Yeah. Uh, Casey Hampton, who's not going to get in, but again, another good player. Uh, for, first eligibility for Robert Mathis. Yeah. Mathis is somebody else who, over the years, is going to get some consideration. It would not shock me if he ends up on the semifinal list. Mm-hmm. Uh, Leslie O'Neill, somebody who I think is... I love Leslie O'Neill. For sure. Uh, semifinalist, maybe? Or no? Just it's not. possible he can be a semifinalist. But again, I told you, I have 32 semifinalists. So. Michael so, Dean... There are going to be seven Perry. people I'm going to be shocked on. So go ahead, sorry. Yeah. Uh, last year of eligibility, Michael Dean Perry. Uh, I don't think he's going to make it. I, I learned that in Cleveland, they named a McDonald's sandwich after him. That's nice. That's cool. Well, was it the Gilbert? What's his name? Gilbert from the Packers. They had one there too. Oh, did they? Okay. Yeah, quite good. His name Gilbert. What was his last name? I can't think of it. Anyway, have been we're, we're we're old and we've been slightly drinking. So I, no, I've been sober today. Oh, that's your problem. 
Yeah, exactly. Well, that's usually my problem. Uh, Simeon Rice. Very good player. Someone very, very important part of that Buccaneers team mm. that won the Super Bowl. Someone who should get more consideration than he does. He was a semifinalist, though. True. Yeah. Well, I guess that's true. So, again, he's he was someone who we had folks pushing for for the finalist list last year in our group. Um, I He was a tough cut for me to get to the finalists. Uh, I think Rice, we'll see what happens over the coming years because this is just happens to be a light year. It's possible he could sneak into the finalist list, but I think there are too many other defensive linemen. Isn't that amazing, though? You say how light a year this is, and this is just in consideration to what everything has been going around it. This is Mm -hmm. the hardest Hall of Fame by far to get in. Agreed. Like you said, I agree with you. This is a weak year. I'm putting up air quotes. Well, it's it's a weak first ballot year, right. um, which which doesn't mean anything other than there are a whole bunch of people who should be in the Hall of Fame again already. We've been able to get in. Like they got John Lynch through the door last year, mm-hmm. but that that was this one person been on. He was there what like seven years, eight years as finalist. How oh my years god, yeah, he was in Tim Brown territory. I know that. Yeah, he was the, uh, Art Monk territory. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how many how many years was he a finalist? He was an eighth. He was eight time finalist. Fanica was a six time finalist. We had an eight time finalist and a six time finalist and three first ballots. Right, right. Like in 2020, we had Palomalu as a first ballot and then a three a four a three and a four mm-hmm. with Atwater, Bruce Hutchinson, and James. So just because someone doesn't get in the first time, doesn't mean they're not worthy of Hall of Fame. It's just it's just so freaking like Alan Fanica. No offense to Steve Hutchinson, who's a Hall of Famer. Alan Fanica not being in like in 2018 and still going in 2021 was insane. Like absolutely nuts. It was bordering on criminal. And that's not even a shot at Hutchinson. It's oh, and not, please yeah. don't take that as a shot Hutchinson. Yeah. Fanica, we, I think I've said this before and I'll say it again. Fanica didn't get in 2020 because they elected Phil Cower. I agree. And they're gonna have too, they're gonna have too many Steelers in that hundredth anniversary class. So basically, we could say that David Baker's ego, because he wanted to be on goddamn television, put, I'll, I'll say it, like pushed him back, pushed Fanica back a year, just so he, he could do his stupid knock and that Shrek face look, like with the big smile. Hey, don't you talk about twenty twenty six Hall of Fame member David Baker? David Baker. <laughs> I mean, how 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 old is that man? I don't know that, that lovable scam artist of a man. <laughs> so does he knock on his own door? I, I have no idea, but he's that he's got to be, he's got to be getting upper sixties at this point. Right. Is there ever been somebody that looked like a former football player and wasn't more than David? Yeah, I mean, he, he just absolutely just absolutely uh, powers over people that he's knocking the door of. It's absolutely crazy. It, it, it's like when Ed Hockley was, was, uh, was a referee and it's like, uh, holding, well, I did, okay, uh, it's okay, Ed, yeah. <laughs> You're not going to mess with Ed Hockley. David Baker was born in 53. So that makes him 68. Okay. So I'm telling you, early 70s. Which is also the amount of inches on his neck. He does... Do you remember Sam Gash? I remember the name, but I can't, I couldn't. He was, he was a fullback for the Patriots and the Bills. Yeah. because Sam I, Gash had a 24 inch neck. Crazy. <laughs> he had a belt size for a neck. I always remember that one. So anyway. Uh, we have Richard Seymour, which I don't like, I, I know that's one of your guys, but he's going to be discussed a lot because I think we're going to be. Looking I think he's, he was one of the four remaining guys from the cut from 10 to five. Yeah. So he has a very good chance of getting in this year. Absolutely. Uh, and as you mentioned, the other Smiths, Justin and Neil, Neil, someone I, mm-hmm. I never understood why there wasn't more of a push for him. And there, we're running yeah, out of he time. Wasn't, wasn't even, Oh no, he was not made last year, but like Justin yeah. Smith had a very good, but short career and it's not good enough. Like he's not even the best short career defensive player on that team. Like that's no, that's he's Willis. not. He's not. So he's I, I don't think Willis. Justin Smith ever has a shot. Uh, Neil Smith is Neil Smith was a problem uh, for offenses to deal yeah. with. And again, 
another one. This. So, so Justin is not even the best Smith on this list, and not even the best uh, short dynamic uh, Niners career defensive player. Yeah, that's it's a lot. Tough. Of stuff. This is a tough hole to get into. Yeah, uh, Greg Townsend. I again, no disrespect to Townsend. Like, is he here because it's his last year of eligibility? I got nothing else. Uh, I don't know. I mean, he was nominated last year too, but uh, Justin Tuck. Uh, yeah. Kevin Williams, your guy, who you which is weird. It's well, weird. It, but but that's what that's what happens when we do all these discussions and sometimes and just to let people know what we did. Uh, as we went on further, we assigned different people to do pitches for certain players. And obviously, if like for me as a Saints fan, I didn't really have a whole lot. I didn't really feel that big about Sam Mill. So mm -hmm. I didn't pitch Sam. I, I pitched someone else. And I forget, you just said, I'll do Kevin Williams. Well, I, I'd been looking at Kevin Williams at that point. Yeah. But, if they, but if before you said like, like you were going, huh. And then after you were doing your research, it's like, okay, this guy needs to have a bust in Canton. And yeah. I'm going to help him get there. Kevin Williams, by the measure, by basically every, me every measurement, is the fourth best player at his position all time. He's the fourth best player at his position all time. He was not a semifinalist last year. Oh, it's insane. Maybe, maybe, and I don't, know, I don't know if it's star caps, which again, I've been through many times. It's the dumbest scam. And I'm a Patriots fan. Star caps is the stupidest scandal in the history of the NFL. Like even stupider, stupider than the flake game. Like, and the, the, he, the Williams brothers there up in the Williams wall and the Vikings got caught in it. But essentially for the shorthand version is they want to make sure they didn't cause any problems in the NFL. So they asked the NFL what supplements they should take. The NFL told them to take the star cap stuff and the star cap stuff had something in it that caused them to test positive for performance enhancing drugs. And so they asked the NFL, they asked the NFL what to take. The NFL told them and then the NFL punished them for taking what the NFL told them to take. Which is really weird because usually the NFL doesn't sort of like uh, hang their players out to dry. Oh, they would never. <laughs> nope, hundred percent not. Yeah. And so you no, know, but Kevin Kevin Williams. I will. I'm sure if we're going to do our discussions again, Kevin yeah. Williams is. I have become. First of all, Kevin Williams. I know you're listening right now. Get yourself on Twitter because it's hard to like. Hey, go check out Kevin Williams without a Twitter handle. Mm -hmm. um, but he is more than deserving for the hall. And I don't know who I need to write about this. I know if I need to write to the Vikings guys or whatever, like, hey, I'm a Patriots fan and your guy's the biggest omission in the hall. But Kevin Williams is Kevin. I am a Kevin Williams stand for the Hall of Fame forever now. You so. can have Vinny do it, but apparently everyone keeps blocking him. <laughs> I, I, I'd be a little more. Pro I'm, I'm a coach, you know, within my job here. I'm coaching people. I'll do things. I'm just going to have to coach the voters into realizing too. Mm. Hey guys, there's a website called pro pro football, uh, reference, uh, reference.com. If you go there, they have a hall of fame monitor thing and just see where he is compared to everyone else. Cause it's way higher than you think way higher than you think. Yeah. And so, Brian young, our final defensive lineman who's been a finalist before a little surprising, but yes, yes. Uh, um, linebackers. Uh, I think a guy we both love, uh, Cornelius Bennett, never been a mm -hmm. semifinalist. I don't believe Cornelius Bennett, those bills teams right now, they got the, they got the triplets on offense. They got Marv Levy. They got Wilson. Mm -hmm. I'm sure we're going to talk about Tasker later, but they on defense. They only have Bruce Smith and Cornelius Bennett was as important to that defense as Bruce Smith. I agree. Cornelius Bennett was an absolutely dominant football player for at least half a decade in that Bills, in that Bills defense. Mm -hmm. So I am, I am very much in Cornelius Bennett's corner. Uh, Lance Briggs, always in the Another, shadow of Verlocker, but still an excellent player in his own right. Yep. And you another, another one of Jack's guys. Yep. Uh, Teddy Bruschi. My guy. Yep. Uh, he is, uh, I know he's never getting the Hall of Fame, but the Patriots don't win. If, if you remember Nick Blancani got in for the no name defense because they need to get somebody in. Now, I already know Ty Law's in and Seymour's probably getting in, so they don't need somebody. 
But if we ever had like nobody getting in, it should have it should be Brewski. Mm-hmm. He's he was the heart and soul of that team by far. Uh, tackling machine, London Fletcher. Yeah, another guy who I don't know if he's ever gonna get in, but and he never had the flashiness of mm-hmm. a lot of other players, but that dude just tackled everybody. If if you were watching a London Fletcher game, he was, chances are he went double digits in tackles. Every game. Because because Luke Keachley retired, right? And Keachley had a short career, and we're, he led the league in tackles pretty much every year he was in the league. Um, and he may get in quickly, but like Keachley, London for Fletcher in many ways is Keachley with a slight, with a longer career. Yeah. Uh, but, Seth, without, but without the accolades of Keachley. So. Uh, Seth Joyner, he's not getting in. Nope. Uh, Willie McGinnis. I love Willie McGinnis, the inventor of the, the, the primary guy for the elephant position. Um, so Willie McGinnis, again, one of the most important players on that defense. Uh, and I have no idea if he's ever going to, uh, he's on the NFL network. So he's yeah. certainly invisible. He should have guys in his corner. I just think as long as Seymour's on the ballot, Seymour's going to have to get out of the way before McGinnis even gets discussed yeah. at all. Sam Mills and his now or never. Oh, this is his last season. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> I think you and I, you're the Saints fan, and you didn't push for Sam Mills. Him. But I mean, I, I there's never going to be a scenario where I can put him ahead of 15 other guys. Yeah, and I, I well, it. I mean, we we talked about this last year. Yeah, he's not even the best linebacker on that team. Ricky Jackson is, and he's probably may not be the second best linebacker on that team. Pat you and I Swill- both, Pat I'm bigger on Pat Swilling. I'm yeah, we're both bigger Pat on Pat Swilling. So uh, it's I I hate to say this. But the last part of his career, the whole keep pounding thing, uh, the beloved uh, thing that he did with the Panthers as sort of the heart of that very good team that in their second year of existence made it to the NFC Championship. Mm-hmm. He's more of a story than he was. Mm-hmm. And, and then again, this isn't to, to take away from what he was. Because uh, I can go back to Herschel Walker and if we sort of combine or if they look at USFL, which they don't, but, but, it, but it's, it's ridiculous to hold the fact that they the NFL refused to pay people against Herschel Walker and Jim Kelly and other people like that. Like Herschel Walker was the best player in that league. Mm-hmm. Wasn't close. And, and, and yeah, he made a financial decision that might have cost him I mean, the Hall of Fame. If, yeah. if if he let's we you I think you went through that. Like if he if what he did in the USFL, let's just say he got. Or was right, it 60%? 60%? And I was being damn conservative. Yeah, like 60% of that in the NFL, like where he goes up in rankings, he's, he's already been a finalist. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Anyway, I know we're going back to running backs. We need to get through these linebackers. Yeah. Uh, Hardy Nickerson, I like him, but nothing's going to happen with him. Nope. Uh, Takeo Spikes, same. No. Yeah. Takeo Spikes, I think, had the longest career of anyone who never appeared in a playoff game. Mm-hmm. Most career games in the NFL without ever being in a playoff game. Uh, so then we have Zach Thomas, who I think uh, we can agree is going to be a finalist just based on yep. what's, what's uh, progressed earlier. Yeah. Uh, he was one of those four, he's one of those four who reigning yep. from the cut from 10 to six, I uh, cut 10 to five. I, I think if anyone has a shot to be a first ballot hall of famer, it's this man, DeMarcus Ware. Yeah. DeMarcus Ware is the one person who I think he's a fringe first ballot. If we had other quality first ballot people he wouldn't really be discussing him uh but he has a chance he will definitely be a finalist i i I think i don't know i don't know if i don't know with well i guess there's no one else in that position well the other person zach thomas Mm -hmm. is at that position and thomas is one of the another like you said one of those five guys or one of those four guys left i don't think demarcus ware is good enough to jump tom i think he's better than zach thomas as a player Mm-hmm. But I don't think it's a, enough of a better than Zach Thomas for Zach Thomas to be jumped by him as a first ballot. It's not as sort of like a, there's no discussion. I mean, DeMarcus Ware, uh, when the, the football list got revamped, Ware went to num- took over at number one. And I, and I thought, 
man, here's a player that I think is phenomenal, but I'm going to say that this is probably my weakest number one I've ever had. Mm -hmm. Which again, is so strange. I mean, saying DeMarcus Ware in the word weak, unless we're talking about weak side, this makes me, there's no logic to it. I, I, I just think they're going to put Zach Thomas in and DeMarcus Ware gets in next year. Because again, once, once Zach Thomas is out of the way, there's really nobody. Yeah. Who's going to be blocking? No, I think, and I just, I don't think, I just don't think there are two linebackers going in. So it's either Ware or Thomas, but not both. Mm -hmm. uh, so then we go to the DBs, uh, Eric Allen, who is very good player, very good player, getting a little bit of momentum. Uh, someone I'm mm -hmm. massive on, uh, which kills me as a Saints fan to say, but I've watched him kill me over and over. Rondé Barber. Yeah. Rondé's problem was that Lynch was on that ballot for so long. Uh, now that Lynch is gone, now you can move to Rondé. Yeah, Rondé Barber is basically the Tory Holt, mm -hmm. you know, for this. Uh, Dre Bly, I don't know why he's here. Yeah, congratulations. He played on the greatest show on turf. That's what I got. Yeah, uh, Leroy Butler, who is – his, his uh, trajectory has been skyrocketing up. I've, I've said this before. He's playing the game. Yeah, well, again, he, he also was stuck behind Lynch. Yeah. So now that Lynch is in, that helps. No one was helped more by that last class than Barber and Butler. Yeah. Rondé and, he, and, and Leroy Butler. And yeah, just to clarify, when I say he's playing the game, he's saying all the right things and doing all the right things for the powers that be. Does that matter? Yes, should it? No, but it does. Yeah. Well, I, I, uh, think, I think Butler, again, is one of those guys who was cut the cut from 10 to 5. Yeah. So. Uh, Nick is teammate Nick Collins, who should not be here. I actually didn't know they were never teammates. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Antonio, yeah. Antonio Cromartie. Yeah. Oh, I know. It, uh, how many kids did he have? <laughs> Are we sure he's retired? He can afford to be retired at this point. <laughs> I still remember they did that one interview where he had, he had three four-year-old ki kids by three different women. Do you remember when it came out, or maybe this might be more of my advanced age, that eight-year age gap sometimes comes in handy. And I remember when it came out that Sean Kemp said, like, he's got six kids with six different women. And it's like, holy shit. And since that time, 100 NFL players, 100 NBA, or NBA players said, ah, that's nothing. Hold my beer. Yeah. Like, also, also Nick Cannon. <laughs> yeah. Nick, Can Nick Cannon literally is like, uh, takes that I see some ladies tonight. You should be having my baby line from a uh, biggie. Very, very seriously. As Chris Rock said, you're as faithful as your options. <laughs> and I remember when he came out with that and I thought, and I thought, yeah, that marriage isn't going to last. Mm. And it didn't, but anyway, uh, Merton Hanks. I haven't said him yet. Have I? No, no. Right. And I probably won't again. Uh, Rodney Harrison. Yeah, I love Rodney Harrison. Rodney Harrison, a lot of support in our group last year. Um, More than I thought. That was my biggest surprise. Harrison's problem, again, that I know it's a popularity contest. Harrison only ever went to one Pro Bowl, ever. Mm -hmm. uh, but he was the most charitable player in the league when he was there because he had the most fines that went to the, the, uh, the nice. retired players fund. Yeah. Um, but a hell of a player. Um, Two completely, he was, he and Sayo were the two best players on that Chargers team, on that Chargers defense. Mm -hmm. uh, you could say Leslie O'Neill as well. Uh, and then when he thought he was washed up, Chargers didn't want anymore, was essential in the Patriots winning those second two Super Bowls and that group of first three. So it's Super Bowls two and three. Absolutely essential to those teams. Um, and honestly, if he had been able to, clear the stickum from David Tyree's helmet and had been able to save a Super Bowl by knocking that ball away, he mm -hmm. may actually have been a finalist already. A few years later, that that never that would have been called dead. Yep. 100% would have been called dead. He would yeah. have been in the grasp. Eventually, when you recover, we're going to have you as a special guest in the Classic Sports Review for that game. David Tyree? Yeah. The last catch of his career. Yeah. He never had never catch the NFL. Why not go out at that point? Exactly. Yeah. So uh Albert Lewis. Eh. Uh 
Tim McDonald. Well, I like this guy, but it's not. It's... Sorry, just by the way, one of the guys on there had like, they thought it was the final four and they highlighted four other people they thought might have a shot. And one of them they highlighted was Albert Lewis. And I was like, what are we talking about? Daniel Day Lewis has just as much a chance. Emmanuel Lewis has just as much a chance. I'd say Emmanuel Lewis is a little behind. Daniel Day Lewis could play the part. I couldn't come up with anything. I heard he has a very good left foot. Damn it! You win the night. <laughs> I'm not gonna be able to top that. Uh, you 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 hit a like a 60 mile an hour curveball that was so far. <laughs> Damn it! I, I thought of it immediately. I just was trying to figure out how to get it in. So, all right, who else we got? Uh, Alan Rossum, who's not gonna no. get in. Asante Samuel, who's the anti Leroy Butler, doing everything wrong to try to possibly get in. I am a Patriots fan. I watched him play. Yeah. Most of his career, mm-hmm. Asante Samuel will never be a Patriots Hall of Famer, let alone an NFL Hall of Famer. And he was good. He was a damn good player. He was very good. If he had caught the if he the pass play yeah. before the pass, if he had intercepted that ball, granted it was not the easiest interception, mm-hmm. but he had been able to intercept that ball and win the Super Bowl for the perfect season. Everything's different, but it's not even like a blunder like you have with Ernest Binder fumbling. But like just his failure to intercept that pass has a major effect on his perception of his career. He intercepts that pass, whole nother, mm-hmm. whole nother view of things again. So, uh, Bob Sanders, eh. he played for the Colts. That's all you got for him. Yeah, uh, Tillman. We've already talked about him. Uh, Troy Vincent, very important in the league, mm-hmm. uh, but I don't know if that's gonna be enough to get him there. Yeah. Uh, semifinalist before Darren Woodson. Yep. And oh, I, did I skip over Adrian Wilson? Yeah, I did. You did. Okay. Yeah. But I don't think that matters that much. And just just to speed this up because we've probably t- did an hour on this. Uh, none of these kickers are going to get through. Uh, and not to disrespect anything that they've done, but we've got place kickers: Gary Anderson, John Cassay, uh, Ryan Longwell, punters. Jeff Fiegels, Sean Landetta, Reggie Roby, Matt Turk. If I were to have a vote for only one of those seven, it's Landetta. I'll ask you the same. Yeah, agreed. No, it's, yeah. it's Landetta. Right. But it, the, the next the next um, kicker to get in is going to be uh, the punter. Uh, what was his name? Leckler. Uh, what? Uh, Shane Leckler. Shane Leckler. Yeah, Leckler is the, is the next punter to get in. And then the next kicker to get in is going to be Finitary. So, yeah, I- and it, Anyone who's not Vinatieri Leckler does not matter. No. Uh, special teams, and again, we it's weird the way they have this. And uh, Josh Cribbs, Mel Gray, Brian Mitchell. Uh, I think very highly of Gray and Mitchell. Yeah, but- uh, Mel Mel Gray was the greatest returner of his time. Brian Mitchell is, I still think, second all in yards from scrimmage uh, in uh, league history purpose. right now. What? It'd be all purpose yards. Oh, I'm sorry, all-purpose yards. I think he's second in all-purpose yards in NFL history. It shows you how important that, that stat is, yeah. the fact that he's never gotten anywhere. And I guess we'll close off with somebody who I think I'm going to be pushing for. Uh, I think he's going to make the finalist list. Uh, uh, not, not Steve Tasker. I think I'm going to have to take uh, Glenn's spot. Uh, I don't know if you know this. Uh, Glenn's on his way to Antarctica. Oh, wow. Yeah, where he's going to be. He sure told me I speak penguin. Yeah. So he's going to be there for a year. So he might not be joining us for, for some of these. Wow. Yeah. Fair enough. He's why is he in Antarctica for a year? I thought he was a triathlete. Or is he just doing some cold training? Uh, you know, he's explained it to me twice. But I was drunk both times. <laughs> so also he was speaking in harp seal. So yeah, something, something uh, work related. Okay. Well, but anyway, Steve Tasker, this is his last year of eligibility. He is a guy who they, if he's ever going to chance to be on the finalist list, this is a year. Mm-hmm. Um, he's been a semifinalist multiple times before. He needs an up or down vote. Yeah. And, and he's like one of those guys where I think if I'm in that room, this would be one of those times I, I'd be breaking my who's the best five rule. Mm hmm. So I've wa- I sure as hell, not as much as Glenn, but I, I sure as hell watched enough uh, Bills games in that era to know what he really was all about. 
Uh, I also have a soft spot for your guy. Uh, oh, geez, uh, uh, Slater, Matthew Slater. Mm -hmm. Who is somebody who I think is also deserving of a Hall of Fame nod at some point in time. And he's I don't a 10 time, again, again, his position doesn't necessarily matter. He's a 10 time first team all pro. 10 times. Yeah. And this is nobody who ever watched the Bills for an extended period of time in the 90s ever thought that, the, that this guy was not one of the best players on that field for what he did. Mm -hmm. Again, a game changer. I know that word is, or that compound word is used over and over, mm -hmm. but he was. Yeah, he, he was. And I, I look forward to discussing him in greater detail. Yeah. Uh, so so I, I guess, again, in the interest of time, we only have, I don't want to bore people too much, but we have three more sections that we do. Mm -hmm. What about dead people? Let's start off with that. I will do, we'll do that one fast so we can uh, get into the other couple things here. But um, all right. So uh, these are folks who passed away this week um, from the world of international soccer. Uh, Jimmy Greaves passed away. He's a member of the English Soccer Hall of Fame. Uh, he is one of the most prolific goal scorers in English history. Had 382 goals in his career across, mostly with Tottenham, but he was with West Ham, Chelsea, spent some time at AC Milan. Yeah, but 382 career goals in 579 appearances is pretty good. Uh, but Jimmy Greaves passed away at the age of 81. Um, from the world of, one second, I have to move the picture here. Uh, from the world of hockey, we lost Lou Angotti, uh, who played for 13 years for the Rangers, Blackhawks, Flyers, Penguins, Blue, and Blues, among others. Uh, he passed away at the age of 83. Mm. Um, from the world of football, Steve Riley, who played 10 years for the Vikings, passed away at the age of 68. Uh, he was uh, All-American in 73 in college, um, but he played 138 games his career and uh, passed away. I don't see what he passed away of at the age of 68. Um, we also lost Roger Brown, uh, who played for – he's a college football Hall of Fame, a six-time Pro Bowler in the NFL – uh, first team all pro twice in 62 and 63 member of the Virginia sports hall of fame. Fringe, fringe guy. For, we talk, we talk so much about the pro football hall of fame, but he's somebody who a case could have been made for. Mm -hmm. Yep. I uh, played for the lions from 60 to 66, the Rams through 67 to 69. Very, very good career. Um, owned eight McDonald's in the Virginia area after he retired. Uh, from the NFL, but he passed away at the age of 84. I learned um, that he was also a pro wrestler. I didn't know that. That I did not know. Yeah, uh, apparently he did that in a few off seasons. Interesting. Yeah. Um, we, I did, there was a wrestler on here. Hold on. Uh, um, Rumi, Kuz, Rumi Kazama passed away. I don't know. Founded Ladies Legend Pro Wrestling in uh, Japan. She oh. passed away at the age of 55. What, does it say what she died of? Uh, she had been in severe pain from endometriosis. Hey. Okay. So. Okay. Um, from the world of, let's make sure here, uh, from the world of uh, golf, we lost Billy Joe Maxwell, who passed away at the age of 92. Uh, won seven times in the PGA Tour, won the a U.S. Amateur Open in 1951. Mm -hmm. uh, finished a top five at the Masters, PGA, and U.S. Open, but never won them, uh, finished ninth at the British Amateur, uh, but he, uh, passed away at the age of 92. Uh, from the world of uh, boxing, we lost 1972 Olympic gold medalist Orlando Martinez of Cuba, who I know 72 is remembered for the hostage situation, mm. but if you know anything about Olympic boxing, his semifinal win over George Turpin in the semifinals of that 72 Olympics was one of the most controversial decisions of all time. And then he went on to just absolutely destroy Al Alfonso Zamora in the gold medal match. 
uh, but he passed away at the age of 77. Um, also from the Olympics, we lost, uh, and actually the International Basketball Hall of Fame, we lost longtime Serbian national team coach Dusan Ikovic, uh, passed away at the age of 77. He led them to um, Eurobasket championships in 95. Uh, 91, uh, he won 91, 989, uh, won the basketball world cup in Argentina in 90 so, silver and soul, like just one of the great international coaches of all time and a member of the FIBA hall of fame, uh, just internationally, just one of the most dominant coaching resumes you're ever going to see, uh, particularly for a non U S team, mm -hmm. um, from the world of just life in general. Uh, we lost, uh, hold on one second. The guy who filmed the Rodney King beating oh. passed away. Um, so George Holiday is a videographer. Uh, is he a videographer passed away. just happened to be there? He just happened to be there. Passed away at the age of 61 of COVID. Uh, he was not vaccinated, uh, but he passed away uh, earlier this week. Just one of those interesting ones along the way that, you know, also uh, passing away today, the biggest uh, unsolved art heist in the United States is the Isabella Stewart Gardner case out of Boston. Mm -hmm. The last mobster who they think was responsible for it passed away today. Mm -hmm. uh, so they may never find that art. Um, from the world of just entertainment in general, uh, we lost Detective Ben Kikua from the original Hawaii Five-0 and Mamo Kahike from the, the re reboot, Al Harrington, passed away at the age of 85. Uh, no, no, we lost Willie Al Gardner. Harrington? Like, like, uh, like uh, wacky inflatable tube men? Yeah, yeah. I don't know what to tell you. Okay. Um, uh, I'm, I'm trying to get through these because they're, they're uh, just character actors, but I was like going through them. Uh, Willie okay. Garson passed yeah. away. Best, known, best friend of, uh, of what's her name from... Uh, Sex in the City. Well, uh, Carrie. Oh, the character was. I don't know. Yeah. You know, for, for our purposes, because Evan and I also curate, I guess we're curators, huh? Of the fictitious Athlete Hall of Fame. Now, uh, Willie Garson's not, uh, none of his characters are there, but he was in two movies, uh, Fever Pitch mm -hmm. and uh, Kingpin. Oh, that's right. He was, he was a purse snatcher in Kingpin. He was a purse snatcher in Kingpin, yes. Interesting. But yeah, he, he passed away at the age of 57. I haven't seen what he died. A, a battle of pancreatic cancer. Mm. That's what it was. Yeah, it's, uh, it's kind, of, kind of interesting. I, I always thought like after that, like, I guess his most famous role, I mean, because that, that was uh, Stanford Blatch in Sex and the City, uh, a love-hate show for me because I watched all that with Pauline and I always thought it was very well done, but I just don't like any of these people. <laughs> Fair that enough. Sense. So, I guess I guess he wouldn't have got that role because he's actually straight. I suppose that's nowadays. true. Nowadays, nowadays, yeah, I suppose that's true. Uh, but he he actually also was in the reboot of Hawaii Five O in twenty ten. So they lost two of their original oh. uh, cast members there. I didn't know that. Uh, Melvin Van Peebles passed away. Oh. Uh, so obviously the father of Mario Van Peebles. Uh, he was eighty nine years old. Um. He was an actor and director himself. Uh, so, but yeah, he passed away at the age of 89. He was one of the guys who did a bunch of the black black exploitation movies, including Sweet Sweetbacks Badass with Five S's song from 1971 that he uh, directed, wrote, and composed as well as acted in. He did not produce that one somehow. No, I'm sorry. He did all of them for that one. I was messing. I messed that up. I was looking at the next one. He also did a Watermelon Man, the original one. Oh, um, okay. I have to watch that one again. Yeah. Uh, and then probably one of the greatest actresses from old Hollywood, one of the last ones remaining, Jane Powell, passed away at the age of 92. Um, Is that the denture lady? Uh, maybe. Yeah, my, my old Hollywood knowledge is not very, very good, but it sounds like a name. Maybe I was thinking of her first from Royal Wedding in 1951. She uh, starred opposite, um, I will think of his name in a second, Bing Crosby. 
in uh in oh sorry not Ben Crosby. Fred Astaire in a Royal Wedding. It's probably her best well-known role, but we don't have many of those old-timey actors left. So, but she passed away at the age of 92. Um, we lost uh, two people for music and then we're done. Um, so we lost uh, Warner Williams from a uh, little bit of blues, which is a pretty well-known uh, blues and folk trio. He passed away at the age of 89 this week. Probably the saddest one because you and I are part of that uh, Rock Hall Revisited thing. And we elected LaBelle a few weeks ago. Uh, yeah. Sarah Dash yeah, yeah. of La- LaBelle passed away. Uh, I want to spend a little more time on her. She passed away at the age of 76. Um, she was actually eventually a sideman or a backup session singer with Keith Richards and the Stones as well at one point in her career. It's amazing that Keith Richards is still alive and everybody associated with him is passing away. Um, but yeah, just LaBelle and um, Patty LaBelle is one of the people at this point who I am, she's now become my cause for the, for the hall. I, Diana Ross is going to get in first, but Patty LaBelle is just not in, in at all. Diana Ross is at least in with the Supremes. Mm-hmm. Patty LaBelle's not in at all, not on her own, not with LaBelle, one of the most important people in music history. She's now my cause. Uh, but st- but uh, Sarah Dash was just as important that the Voulou Vigouche avec moi song does not exist without Sarah Dash. Um, so just that's an incredible loss. I'm, I'm hopeful that they get in shortly. I'm just sorry she's not going to be there to see it. Who, who's a who's a bit more important to you, uh, Patty Labelle or Shaka Khan? Oh, wait, Patty Labelle. Oh, okay. Yeah, I I would put Patty Labelle in first. Shaka's Patty Labelle's Shaka? never even been discussed at okay. this point. Shaka's okay. had multiple yeah. bites of the apple. Yeah, I mean, like I for me, I, I think it's I guess clear by that statement or my reaction. Shaka is a bigger deal for me than than Patty Labelle. Having mm-hmm. said that, I do think it's very strange that her name has never come up or it's not even floated from what I can tell. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. And it's, I don't and know. It's not like she's not still alive doing interviews. I mean, she's, well, she, she was performing in Atlantic city on the 18th of September. Okay. The belt was and called dash up on stage to sing. And then dash passed away two days later. Right. D- dumb question. Is she related to Stacy dash? Uh, that's a good question. I actually don't know. Uh, she's the seventh of 15 children while you're doing that i could po- i could possibly do no. a break out a brit no oh. uh, i was going to break out one, another terrible impression but maybe- oh please go ahead okay. I, don't, don't, don't let me stop you you probably after i do it you'll you kind of wish you stopped me <laughs> all right on the remake of uh lady marmalade just say little kim just, just say that. No, no, Lil say Kim? Yeah. Uh, it sounds a lot like your Kamala Harris laughing. So. No, my Kamala, Kamala. Harris laughing is. <laughs> so. I, sh- right. I, should, I should sort of get a video that just says flashes under here. It says master impressionist. Ted, if you're listening, work on that. Sounds good. All right, so we're through the death march. I kind of rushed through it a little bit, but yeah, we didn't have any huge names this week. So, well, I mean, we generally don't have a one hour section to go through. That is true. Yeah. Although it is Hall of Fame season now. So, which is sort of why we, the lack thereof is why we came up with regular things. So, uh, I've, I've got one regular segment left. Uh, that's elevator up, elevator down. I look at who in the past week has made better case for their Hall of Fame. And I'm just going to whip right through this and this someone I've already talked about because he set a record uh, for the most home runs in a season by a catcher. Someone I talked about in depth two weeks ago, Salvador Perez. So I'll just, yeah. I'll just close it there. Cause I, I've. When, put it this way, when Johnny bench is congratulating you on your prowess on Twitter, that's probably pretty good. That's a pretty good sign. Yeah. And yeah. And Perez is having su- such the best season of his career, despite nobody paying attention. Well, Correct. I am Mr. Perez. I'm paying attention. Uh, I've got a few elevator downs. Okay. Uh, one, sticking with baseball. 
I have a soft spot for the San Diego Padres. Mm. I don't know why. Maybe because it just seems like a pretty cool city that has never won shit. Mm -hmm. And and, keep, and keeps losing their teams to other city to LA. Yeah, that's true. Well, they they have the Padres went all in, and for a smaller market team, they can't do this and constantly reload like their friends up north, the Dodgers. Mm -hmm. uh, or the Giants further or up the north. The Giants or so many other teams. Mm -hmm. And someone's gonna pay for this failure. Uh, you might've seen earlier in the week, uh, Manny Machado and uh, I forget who was yelling at who. Mm -hmm. I think it was Machado. Machado's yelling at Tatis. At Tatis, yeah. So long story short, this is, there's a lot of frustration. Now there has been a lot of issues with their bullpen and injuries, but someone's gonna get an ax and it's gonna be their manager, JC Tingler or Jay Stingler. I, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, not necessarily because he's doing a shit job, but someone's gonna get it. Mm -hmm. and it's going to be him. And this could have been a monster year based on who they had. And he's, he's going to be the fall guy because someone's going to have to be. Mm -hmm. And it won't be the GM. It's going to be this guy. It's going to be their manager, who I believe is in year two of a contract. We've seen this before where they get bought out. So he, he's, my ele he's an elevator down because this could have been a very special year. Uh, second thing, just going back to the WWE, I, I shit on the WWE Hall of Fame because I wonder how much longer it's going to matter with AEW sniffing at their heels and maybe possibly overtaking them. Uh, they just made a deal with the estate of Owen Hart, mm. who is not in the WWE Hall of Fame, not because, he, not because people don't want him, but because his ex-wife will block it at every turn. And God knows what kind of lawsuits she would make. But she made a deal with AEW to honor his legacy, which is another fuck you to Vince McMahon. And she's got a pile of them to give him. So any chance, not that there was any chance that Owen Hart would be in the WWE Hall of Fame. It's gone. There was, it was never there. I don't think it was ever there to begin with, with, but not only is the elevator down, the elevator doesn't even exist. Fair enough. So that I thought was sort of worth mentioning. And the other elevator down is another repeat offender, Ben Simmons. Oh, yeah. I was good talking about him as my ugly, but yeah. Okay. Well then I'll, I'll just be quick. He doesn't want to play for the Sixers and nobody, and the Sixers can't get rid of him. Yeah, uh, Ben Simmons has imploded his career because he because he's getting in his own head, mm -hmm. and, and and it's sad to watch this shit happen. I'm, I know I know I use that line with Naomi Osaka, I, but I like her. I don't know that I like Ben Simmons. I I just don't care about this guy. I'm not rooting for him. I'm not rooting against him. But he right now he's just there, and you can't be weak in the NBA like uh, above the neck. You can't. No, they will eat you alive. Yeah. The moment he did not take that layup in the fourth quarter was the moment that he could never come back to the Sixers, and also the moment nobody would trade for him. So he's not reporting, and I don't know what he's going to do because they're not going to be able to get rid of him. Yeah, I mean it's. It's a mess situation for somebody who's still, I think, under 24 has a yeah, shit. Well, they're, they're talking about trade. There's all sorts of talks that's just somehow going to trade him to Portland for Dame Lillard. And like, why would Portland do that? They wouldn't unless they're, they're convinced Lillard and, is never going to resign. Yeah. I mean, maybe for McCollum to break that up and try something different. But the dude can't shoot. The dude I actually take he shoots with the wrong hand, as Kevin O'Connor always tells us yeah. on the ringer. He shoots with the wrong hand. If he shot with the other hand, he'd be fine. So, and because he shoots the wrong hand and is unwilling to change that, he doesn't shoot at all. And then he can't be on the floor in the fourth quarter. And if he's the guy who's handling, because he's a great ball handler, he really is. Yeah. He's a very good defender, if not a great defender. But if he's completely useless and is not a threat to shoot, like Rondo isn't that much of a threat to shoot, but at least drive to the basket and try and do something. 
and he'll take some threes that he probably shouldn't be taking. Right. Rondo never was afraid. No, Rondo Rondo, has no fear. Yeah. Rondo hasn't had it for years, but Rondo, I mean, I, I'm surprised anyone signed him at all to be Mm. honest, but there's a lot of people who don't believe in Ben Simmons offense. And sadly, one of them is Ben Simmons. Probably number one. Yeah. So So he's, he's my elevator down because he threw water on the, on the keypad. Understood. Yeah. All right. Well, I sorry, I didn't mean to. No, no, that that's fine. So just by the way, so we'll go to the uh, the last thing before we go to the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, I do I do realize I left out one other person from uh, the death march. I did want to bring up. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rob Rivera passed away, who is one of the big founders of the black hole that our good friend Wayne Mabry is a massive part of. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so Rob Rivera died also from COVID. Uh, at the age of, I believe he was 50, he was said he was in his 50s. I think I saw somewhere he was 54. Uh, but he was one of the guys back, the black hole came about in 1996 uh, when the Raiders moved back to Oakland from LA. Uh, and he was one of the ones who really started the tradition section 105 there. Um, he was supposed to be going to uh, the game last weekend, or I'm sorry, the first weekend of the season. Uh, he had tickets for the the opening of the new stadium in in Vegas with fans, mm. and uh, was too sick to go. Uh, but I did want to point out one of the big, most important fans in the NFL also passed away this last week. Right. He just wasn't on my Wikipedia countdown. I had a separate thing for him, so I missed the tab. Mm. So, all right. So uh, my good, I'm just going to go through someone else who I don't know what it means in baseball anymore. But John Lester, former pitcher for the the Red Sox. One of the few people is a uh, World Series ring to both the Red Sox and Cubs. I believe there are two of them. I think it's him and David Ross uh, are the only ones. But he uh, won his 200th game this week, uh, which is not something which is happening in baseball much anymore. No. I know we talked when Greg Maddox won his 300th that he might be the last 300 game winner. I'm wondering how many more 200 game winners we're going to ever have in Major League Baseball. Like the question. safest street, the safest record in any sport is Cy Young's win record. Oh, I'd have to read to baseball. I was it uh, will never, ever, ever fall. I was uh, unless just, baseball rap massively changes. No, it, it won't. I mean, well, wins and losses, well, wins, they, they do matter, but not for a pitcher's record. I mean, especially when, I mean, I was watching, uh, how many teams have the strategy? Okay, we're just going to put a player in for the first inning. Yeah. And then, and then some starter, else. an opener or whatever they call it. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, there, it, it's uh, un- unless they sort of look at a win share type deal. Mm. And then, which isn't going to happen. No, I, I, I just don't know. I don't know what it does for Lester's Hall of Fame chances. I don't know what his Hall of Fame chances are anyway. He was. Mm-hmm. the most important pitcher on the 2016 Cubs and one of the most important pitchers on a couple of Red Sox teams. So I don't know what that fully does for him in terms of his hall of fame resume, but the fact he may be one of the last guys to get 200 wins may end up actually helping him when he gets there, but he's just all around good guy. survived cancer, wanted to save the Red Sox and to say they lowballed him is a insult to lowballing people. And, and, um, and, and before we went on and you told me who that was going to be, uh, because clearly my age is showing, and and you said like, what do you mean you've never heard of John Lester? But I heard John Mustard. I don't know. You've why. been playing too too much Clue. So, <laughs> You're so um, it was just. The, but yeah, yeah but, that was on video because the look you gave me, like, what kind of idiot are you that you've never heard of? Like, this? you haven't heard of John Lester? But I mean, Lester at this point is how old is he? He is thirty seven. He'll turn 38 in January. I don't know how much longer he has in baseball, uh, but good for him on, on hitting that big milestone. So that's, that's my good for the week. A good guy. Yeah. Uh, my bad for the week. Um, I bring up soccer a lot, but, and I always say, you don't want to go peak CONCACAF, but CONCACAF out CONCACAF itself this week. Wow. So, there's a man, the vice president of Suriname. I'm sure you're very familiar with him. His name is oh, Ronnie, yeah. Brun- Ronnie he, Brunswick. He was just over at the house yesterday. I'm not surprised. Uh, Ronnie Brunswick 
which is spelled B-R-U-N-S-W-I-J-K, owns a team in Cernak. Uh, and the name of his team is, uh, the actual name of his team is, hold on, I want to make sure I'm saying it correctly, uh, is Inter Mogan Tapo, which he also calls Inter Brunswick, um, lost six to nothing at the hands of Olympia in the CONCACAF uh, Champions League in the very first rounds of it. Why this is important is... Is this qualifying? Just for my own understanding. So this is like qualifying to get into... Yeah, this is low-end okay. qualifying, the very first part of Champions League for the CONCACAF. Okay. Um, and by the way, they're talking about doing a World Cup-style tournament between the U.S. and Mexican teams, I guess Canada teams and MLS, uh, starting in 2023, which is interesting. Can see exactly what that comes to. But anyway, so Brunswick owns the team and decided that he wanted to play in this game. <laughs> He's 60. <laughs> he became the oldest player ever to take the pitch in an international club competition. He didn't he didn't just play, he played 54 minutes of this game as a 60-year-old before he was replaced at the 54th minute by, wait for hit, his 42-year-old son. Where do you find this stuff? You cannot go wrong by just following CONCACAF and figuring out what's going on. It's just, it's embarrassing. They lost 6 nothing in this game, by the way. It's embarrassing. He actually wasn't bad. He had he had 17 passes and 13 of them went to his own team. So he completed 13 out of 17 passes, which isn't terrible for a low level like low level professional soccer guy. But for a 60 year old, it sounds pretty good. It's pretty good. Uh, yeah. But it's just I just peak Concacaf. I I may just have to have a peak Concacaf section at some point. What how did Concacaf peak this week? It's just hilarious. Uh, good for you, Ronnie. Good for you, Ronnie Brunswick. Um, and may you, wow. I, I, I hope to break, break the record in two years when you get through qualifying again. So, didn't Putin have sort of a game? Like, didn't he play like I don't know if it was an actual league, but he was playing a hockey game or something? Yeah, like, there was letting one. him do everything. And it's yeah, not that like Putin one. looks like a bad athlete, but you know, I, he looked pretty good shirtless on that horse. I mean, but whatever. Well, I mean, I'm um, also comparing him to uh, go, I'm going politics. Drop. Yeah, yeah, stay out of that. All right. <laughs> yeah. So finally, um, the last the last thing I want to bring up. I know we were talking about. I was going to talk about the Ben Simmons situation, but we'll go back to the other option I was looking at. Sorry, about uh, that. which is uh, Evander Kane. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Evander Kane's wife Brianna, not a fan. Not a fan uh, of and, you're not a fan of hers, or she's not a no, fan. No, she's her. she's not a fan of, of Evander. Okay. I, I I know nothing about her one way or another. Um uh who was the guy from the Mets who had the crazy wife? Which um, one? He was a pitcher. Anna, her first name is Anna. I can't think of his last name, but she was nuts, certifiably nuts. She I was against. I have nothing against Brianna Kane. But she said that Evander bet on his own NHL games. The NHL says that they have completed a investigation using Patterson, Belknap, Webb, and Tyler LLP in conjunction with NHL security, finding that the allegations that, uh, De I'm sorry, not Brianna, Deanna Kane made on social media that he bet on his games, there is no evidence to support it. Just even though he's been bankrupt for a multi-million dollar NHL player, but yeah. And that the NHL considers this specific matter closed. I don't get it. I mean, unless it's possible, because it is, it's possible. She's a jilted woman. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I, I, it's not that I'm saying that I, I agree with the NHL. I would make that very clear. Because usually the be usually the right answer is the most logical one, and we're talking about what is he? Is he even thirty or thirty thirty one? Uh, by the way, it's Anna Benson is who I was thinking of earlier. Oh, uh, oh yeah, yeah, okay, I remember. How old is Evander Kane? It's a good question. 
but he but he's still like he's still as you like to say the middle six of his of his nhl career he's he's 30 he's 30 okay so, he just turned 30 okay so he probably had some good hockey left uh is he he's a free agent now, right because he's on the sharks oh so he's still with the sharks yeah i can't imagine that i will there's there's clearly some issues in that family and usually in hockey they keep that stuff really close it's not like hockey players don't have their share of scandals we just don't learn about them Mm -hmm. is is really what what it is more than anything else uh so evander has already been bankrupt very very rare he he filed in his bankruptcy that he's one has 1.5 million dollars in gambling debts Mm -hmm. okay i didn't even know that part yeah so it's not that big a stretch to imagine that he was doing that, that he was doing whatever he needed to do to sort of get out of that. When you, once you're compromised, you'll do things. Uh, do you think True. you're protecting him or they were incompetent in an investigation? Well, they're now trying to blame Deanna, saying that there's no evidence and there's, in fact, evidence showing the contrary and that she refused to cooperate. And she is now, of course contradicting that nhl stance on this um but i don't know exactly what happened all i know is this it seems very unlikely to go away anytime soon oh but the good news for the sharks is that he has a full no trade clause so uh if they wanted to get rid of him it would be it would be a challenge so he's a fourth year of a seven year deal that pays him $7 million annually. So if they were going to try and trade him, someone would have to take on the next four years at 7 million a year. Well, maybe the sharks can trade him to the loan sharks. Yeah, there we go. That was a good one. Thank you. Thank you. That gets my uh, golden seal of approval. Ooh, me like it. Yeah. Well, I guess this closes off another show. Apologies, as the network's been a little bit soft lately. I had to do a one-week uh, trip back to uh, the motherland of Canada. Does anyone mm-hmm. call Canada the motherland? Sure. It's right, like I- Russia, only North American. It's like Russia, but different. Yeah. Yeah, that you, works. Do, who's your version of Yakov Smirnov? That's what I really need to know. Ah, okay. Uh Hmm. I'm trying to think of a... And for those of you who don't know who Yakov Smirnov is, here's a, here's a sampling. I go, to, I go to America and say, I want to buy a car. They say, you want to buy that car? It would cost a mint. I say, what a country. You can buy a car for a candy. <laughs> Actual Yakov Smirnov joke right there. That was his level of comedy. So, In Russia, we have two channels. Channel one is KGB. Channel two is go back to channel one. <laughs> yeah. That may not be an actual Yakov joke. I, it's well, I, I, I actually had a friend, I actually had a friend in law, law school, Mike, Michael Yelovenko, who grew up in the Soviet Union. He was in his probably late 30s when I, I was in law school. So he's probably in his 50s at this point. And I said to him, So how did you know? What did you think when you first came to the West? And what did you think? And he goes, I go to the grocery store. And I go up to the dairy section and there are 15 kinds of yogurt. I mean, whoever heard of such a thing? <laughs> <laughs> so he's like, he's like, there are two types of yogurt, fat and non-fat. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, you Michael, if you're out there, I'm sure you're listening too. Uh, so maybe maybe Yakov's listening. So uh, anyway, know, man, all right. Well, you'll, you'll think about Yakov Smirnoff's version in Canada. And um, I'll see you next week. I have it. Ooh. Okay. It's not a comedian, but it, it's someone who is only distinctly could be popular in Canada. You won't know him. He won't be in your homework. But it, it's, an, it's a guy named Stompin' Tom Connors. Okay. So Stompin' Tom what, had uh, hits that were only could possibly be hits in Canada. Interesting. Oh, by the way, sorry, I've just yeah. thought about something. There's a story in Massachusetts that huh? I swear was out of Canada. There's okay. a guy who was almost killed by a beaver. 
in Massachusetts. He was like at the thing and the beaver attacked him and dragged, like bit him in the neck and dragged him under the water. They're strong little bastards. Barely rescued. I was like, how is this Massachusetts and not Canada? (laughs) Well, because uh, Canadian beavers are much nicer than American beavers. Hmm. Okay, Frank Drebin. Anyway, I will. (laughs) (laughs) Let's close on that. (laughs) I'll talk to you later, man. Stay safe, everybody.